safety for adult safety belts alone. Remember that four foot nine is the magic number and get your little pumpkin there safely in a booster seat. Oh, thank you. For more information, visit boosterseat.gov. This has been a message from the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. From tuning an engine to replacing a fuse, you can learn it all under the hood. Heard every Saturday afternoon from 2 to 4 on the voice of Fort Dodge, AM 1400, KVFD, Fort Dodge. The fighting's not over in Syria. I'm Lisa Brady, Fox News. Syrian Defense Forces reporting heavy fighting to, quote, finish off whatever remains of ISIS. This after the White House proclaimed the caliphate in Syria 100 percent eliminated. It's not only President Trump and Sarah Sanders now saying that the caliphate is 100 percent defeated. It's also SDF commanders here on the ground to us. They have told us most recently that that final village of Bahoz has been totally liberated and all that remains is a small cave with a few ISIS fighters on the outskirts who are still holding out. Fox's Benjamin Hall in eastern Syria also reporting a formal announcement is being planned for tomorrow. A judge in California hearing arguments in a lawsuit over new rules for asylum seekers at the southern border. Fox's Jessica Rosenthal has this live. Lisa, the ACLU told Judge Richard Seaborg the Trump administration policy to make asylum seekers wait in Mexico violates all kinds of immigration laws. The Trump administration says there's a backlog of more than 800,000 asylum cases. The system's just overwhelmed. Joshua Greer is an asylum attorney here in L.A. Of course, in Spain, Mexico creates all kinds of problems with attorney-client communication, cooperation, and then I think the second problem is that Mexico is a terribly corrupt and dangerous place. Judge Seaborg, an Obama appointee, said to be fair, the Trump administration is saying that misguided laws and bad court decisions created this asylum crisis. But he also questioned the concerns asylum seekers have about having to wait in Mexico, Lisa. Thanks, Jessica. An hour to the close on Wall Street, a sell-off blamed mainly on renewed fear of a slowdown. Fueled by a negative European and U.S. manufacturing data released today, as well as the Fed's decision to lower growth projections and in its interest rate outlook for the year earlier this week. German industrial output neared a six-year low. All signs that a global slowdown is imminent. Fox's Jerry Willis, the Dow's down 250. This is Fox News. Looking for ways to save with your Medicare plan? Walgreens is a preferred network pharmacy with many plans nationwide, which could mean lower co-pays for you. So bring your prescriptions to a Walgreens pharmacy today to start saving. Walgreens, trusted since 1901. Walgreens participates as a preferred network pharmacy with United Healthcare, Cigna HealthSpring, and Express Scripts Medicare. For a complete list of available plans, please contact 1-800-MEDICARE. TTY users should call 1-877-486-2048. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, or consult www.medicare.gov. Other pharmacies are available on our network. And now, the worst commercial ever. I'm Jake. And I'm Jack. We're the Plow Guys. How do we keep your driveways clean? With, with commercial, commercial auto and business insurance through Progressive. They help with a customized insurance plan that keeps our business on the road. And that's news worth shouting out loud simultaneously. Enthusiastic yelling at the same time. Yeah! Terrible. Whereas commercial auto and business insurance through Progressive is anything but. Visit ProgressiveCommercial.com to quote today. Insurance provided in service by Progressive Casualty Insurance Company. It's affiliated in third-party insurers. Cost of deadly flooding in the Midwest is rising along with the rivers. And we've got a lot of water right now that's pushing down the Missouri River, and that's where we're seeing a lot of the flooding. And the immediate concern is how high is that water going to get? Will the levees hold? Information uh, received yesterday from the Army Corps of Engineers said that 28 levees in the Missouri River Basin alone had either been overtopped or breached. One of those locations was Winthrop, Missouri, where residents can only speculate if they will have a town anymore. A lot of people who got the order to leave say the day of living down by the river are over. It's just not worth it. Fox's Mike Tobin, Iowa, now estimating more than one and a half billion dollars in damage, pushing the total with Nebraska and Missouri to more than three billion so far. Much of it damage to farmland and livestock. A fight over adoption rules in Michigan may be over. The state reaching a settlement with the American Civil Liberties Union, which sued over religious objections being used to turn away gay couples or individuals. Under the settlement, faith-based adoption agencies that are paid by the state will no longer be able to turn away LGBT applications. Critics of the settlement say it violates Michigan law protecting faith-based adoption agencies. President Trump hosting a meeting with Caribbean leaders at his Florida estate. We'll be talking about many subjects, trade. We always talk about trade, but we'll also be discussing, I have a feeling, Venezuela that may come up in our conversation. 
Uh, it's become a very big topic all over the world, Venezuela. The Caribbean region has not been united behind the U.S. call for disputed Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro to step aside in favor of self-proclaimed interim president and opposition leader Juan Guaido. Again, a sell-off continues on Wall Street. The Dow and the S&P down more than 1%. The Nasdaq down over 2%. At least Brady. This is Fox News. Your news, your town, your station. KVFD News when it breaks. Good afternoon. I'm Alex Benzigal with the KVFD Afternoon News. The Iowa State Patrol says a Ford Dodge woman was killed in a two-vehicle accident Thursday afternoon. The accident happened on the Kenyon Road Bridge in Ford Dodge when a westbound 2006 Chevy Impala driven by 89-year-old Marvin Holsey of Ford Dodge crossed the raised median and struck an eastbound 2003 Dodge Dakota pickup truck driven by David L. Stone of Harcourt. A passenger in the Holsey car, 85-year-old Ruth Smith of Ford Dodge, was pronounced dead at the accident scene. Holsey was airlifted to a Des Moines hospital for treatment of his injuries. Stone was transported to Uni Point Trinity Regional Medical Center in Ford Dodge for treatment and was reported in stable condition. The Democratic governor of Louisiana and a Republican congressional leader are criticizing Iowa Congressman Steve King for King's remarks about hurricane victims in their state. King was in Charter Oak for a town hall meeting and compared victims of Hurricane Katrina in 2005 to Iowans dealing with floodwaters now. We're Iowans, and I'm always proud of our reaction to this. I've worked with the FEMA people for a long time, but here's what FEMA tells me. We go to a place like New Orleans, and everybody's looking around saying, who's going to help me, who's going to help me? And they're just always gratified when they come and see how Iowans take care of each other. And so that's a that's a point of pride that spreads across the country. Congressman Steve Scalise, the second ranking Republican in the House, represents the New Orleans suburbs. Scalise calls King's remarks absurd and offensive and a complete contradiction to how the people of New Orleans responded to the devastation of Hurricane Katrina. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards, a Democrat, tweeted that King's comments were disgusting and disappointing. King tweeted yesterday that he's working to restore free speech to the halls of Congress. During his remarks in Charter Oak yesterday, King said in 2005 he made four visits to New Orleans to tour the devastation. First member of Congress to go in down there. Um, broke some rules to go there. I'll just confess to that. And uh, <clears throat> flew into the airport and just keep the mic and asked permission to land. They gave it to us, so we went in. And uh, I saw that from the air and from the ground and went back and did what we could to help those folks down there. King toured flood damage in Missouri Valley and Hornick yesterday, promising to work closely with local leaders to help Iowans recover from the disaster. King said as the only Republican in Iowa's congressional delegation, he won't hesitate to use his influence with President Trump to help Iowans gain access to federal flood relief. A Northwest Iowa school principal has resigned, but it's unclear why, as Radio Iowa's Joel Herman reports. The Stormlight Community School District has accepted the resignation of Bo Rouleau as principal of the high school. District Superintendent Dr. Stacy Cole says the resignation is effective immediately following an investigation that revealed a violation of district policies. Cole says they want to assure families and community members that at no time was student safety compromised. The district will soon begin the process of finding the next high school principal. In the meantime, Cole will serve as acting principal. Joel Herman, Radio Iowa, Storm Lake. I'm Alex Benzgal with the KVFD Afternoon News. Have a great day. Here's the AM1400 KVFD weatherology forecast. Bright sunshine expected this afternoon with a high of 52. Northeasterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Lows level off around 29 tonight. Daytime highs approaching 55 tomorrow. Chance for scattered showers. High of 51 Sunday with a chance for scattered rain showers. D1 Monday. From the Weatherology Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Jennifer Wojcicki. Currently, it's 49. When it's time to make over that new room or your home, come to Jim's Carpet One Floor and Home. Hi, this is Dean Sternberg with Jim's Carpet One. Now, during our home makeover flooring sale, you'll save up to $1,000 on select floors, luxury vinyl, hardwood, tile, and more, featuring Tigressa, the stronger, softer carpet. We make it easy for you to get your perfect floor with the special financing available. Don't miss the home makeover sale for a limited time only at Jim's Carpet One Floor and Home. Also, don't forget to visit our Steals and Deals room for even more savings now at Jim's Carpet One across from Decker Truck Line. Financing on approved credit. See store for details. Have you ever wondered how the brain works? What makes us tick? Join me, Greg Woods, every Wednesday morning for all the latest news on the brain, on aging, and the science behind it all. It's the Mind Boggles, every Wednesday morning at 8.30 on AM 1400 KVFD. 
Dutch Boy's new Platinum Plus paint with Stain Shield technology has the performance you expect from a luxury paint at a price you didn't. Platinum Plus is up to 50% more washable and stain resistant than a leading premium paint in satin sheen. Superiority ranges from 24 to 50% depending on sheen selected. Platinum Plus keeps your walls looking new longer. Menards and Dutch Boy paint have you covered. Go ahead, live your life. Right now at Menards, get 11% off everything, including Dutch Boy paint. Take the worry out of winter with a winter weather advisor on KVFD, brought to you by Community Health Center Fort Dodge, offering dental, behavioral health, and general medical assistance for men, women, and children. They're committed to your well-being. Community Health Center, get to know them. And Creative Cakes, making life sweet with espresso, lunch, gourmet cupcakes, and other sweet treats. Creative Cakes in the Crossroads Mall, Fort Dodge. They make life sweet. Listen for the winter weather advisor on the voice of Fort Dodge, AM 1400 KVFD. It's happening to you every night. One snores and the other can't sleep. But now there is a quick and easy to use solution, a natural solution. Snore Stop, the number one selling anti-snoring medicine in the U.S. Thank you, Snore Stop. You saved my marriage. It's time to try Snore Stop and make every night a better night for both of you. Spray or tablets are available today at Rite Aid and CVS or online at SnoreStop.com. Hi, I'm Jamie Brundage, owner of Historic Bruce Funeral Home. When you're planning the memorialization of your loved one, you're telling their story and sharing sharing special memories with your family and friends. At Historic Bruce Funeral Home, we're proud to help you celebrate the life of your loved one. And we're here to guide you with your selections as we help you and your family say goodbye in a way that's right for you. Our staff is committed to compassionate care and attention to detail. Historic Bruce Funeral Home, Fort Dodge. Online at brucesfuneralhome.com. Michael Devine at AM 1400 KVFD. Listen to this. Making radio great again. A little sexy, but more disturbing. Michael Devine at AM 1400 KVFD. Listen to this. Making radio great again. Well, this is AM 1400 KVFD, the voice for Dodge. I'm Michael Devine. Yeah, we're going to tell the truth, make it matter. And we're never going to be boring. Live, local, and relevant talk radio uh, from the corner of 2nd Avenue. North and uh, 10th Street, and I would like to welcome to the program once again, Congressman Steve King. How are you, sir? I'm doing all right. In studio with in you, Mike, and studio. happy about that. Well, I tell you, if somebody throws any water on you in this studio, I'm going to beat the hell out of them personally. How's well, that now sound? we told them where I am, so <laughs> then maybe that will happen again today. Uh, no, twice, it? No, if they do, there will be extrajudicial punishment. <laughs> Won't have I, to. I'm old, but I'm not dead. It'll be in house, full so, service, uh, right here. I I understand one one of the tolerant left. Uh, you had an encounter encounter over at Mineral City with one of the uh, tolerant left here in town uh, uh, just a short time ago. Well, I want to make sure that we all know that um, he was an intolerant left from Colorado, Colorado. a visitor to this community, and um, I was sitting there with Mayor Matt Bemrick and. Dennis Plotz and some others uh, talking about business for this city and the growth that they, they do a terrific job, by the way, mm -hmm. one of the best leadership teams I know. Uh, and uh, then uh, a young fellow, dark haired fellow with a beard uh, came up behind me. I actually couldn't hardly see him. He leaned down from my right shoulder and he said, are you Steve King? And I said, yes, I am. And I turned a little bit. Uh, I was going to shake his hand and he threw a full glass of water all over the top of me and it splashed on some of the others there. And a in that restaurant and we jumped up and grabbed him and called the city police who came down to handle the issue. So they're handling the issue right now. It just well, happened within the last I'm hour. And that. I, I understand there was a uh, Australian politician who was egged by a young man and the, you shouldn't do that to Australian politicians, I guess, cause he decked the kid. <laughs> I saw that. I think it was Mark Campbell that showed me the video yeah, yeah. of that. And uh, that was an appropriate response in this country. I don't know what happens if somebody assaults you and you hit them back and whether that becomes charges against the guy that's self-defending himself or not. Could be illegal. Good point. You know, we should be able to, uh, you know, people should be able to spit in our face without any. Uh, can't let that happen. No, I can't. No, but, that's, that's not the way the world works. Isn't it I, sad? I don't know what, but, you know, the thing about liberals is they try to make a movie of their own life by making movies of other people's lives. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, there's so much drama and emotion and, and, and all they're always talking about the things that should be. But they're, you know, ultimately they don't know anything at all. If you listen to them, yeah, but really, they, and uh, but they want them to vote. Uh, they they yeah. want them to vote. I wonder what if we ask liberal what nationalism won, they would nationalism was. For example, let's ask one of the uncultured uh, left. 
and there's a lot of them anymore, uh, what nationalism was, they'd have to say the Klan or something like that, or maybe you <laughs> or yeah. me or somebody. Yeah. Uh, that would be the extent of it. But I was talking uh, in the last couple of days with uh, representatives from farm groups around our area, and we talked about nationalism in China. The Chinese, for example, are, are, are very nationalist people. What they do, and, and I don't have any problem with that, by the way. Uh, what, what that means is the Chinese will do whatever they need to, to if they think it's going to benefit their country and their people who are Chinese, not surprisingly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, that's really the that example is really the definition of national. It doesn't make them racist, does it, Mike? No, it doesn't. That's the that's the deal. I am a nationalist. I want what's best for our country. I don't want to make apologies for our country. I don't want to make apologies for doing our best, defending ourselves vigorously. And I'm sure as hell not going to apologize if we send troops overseas because it's better to fight them over there than mm -hmm. it is over here. And if you think they don't want to come over here and start the fight, you're out of your mind. So uh, uh, I'm sorry if it's too hot in here. I see you had to loosen your tie. No, it was because <laughs> I was feeling your heat, Mike. I used <laughs> a lot of hot air. Huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm, I ask you the definition of a nationalism, then I answer well, myself. Okay, I beg your uh, let me inject a little bit into that. Right. And um, I picked up, a. first of all, we have not used the term, we've, I'll say white nationalism. We haven't right. used that in our vernacular in any way at all in going clear back into our history. We ran a LexisNexis search on this. Sure. And we went back to the year 2000. How many times was that term even used in any publication? And that will bring all of them out forward in the LexisNexis. From the year 2000 up until the year 2015, you'd have to count it as virtually zero. We didn't mm -hmm. talk about it at all. And then in 2015, it jumped up to about eight or 900 in that year. 2016, it jumped up to 10,000. And in 2017, it went to 30,000 times. Well, coincidentally, the uh, week after, the, after Trump was elected president, that would be the Sunday, November 12th through the 15th, there was a big meeting of, um, of Democrats in the Mandarin Hotel in Washington, D.C., George Soros was there to lead the way, along with every power player that you can imagine on mm -hmm. that side of the aisle. And they were there to celebrate and decide what they were going to do with the new Tr Clinton presidency. But the <laughs> disappointment was, of course, that uh, she didn't win. Right. So they turned that effort into how are we going to how are we going to act? This? How are we going to deal with the Trump presidency? Out of that meeting, I'm I'm convinced came the resistance movement. Oh, yeah. do not let him go. And that was where the center of it was. Also, look at all the times that the words were weaponized, like white nationalist, white supremacist, Nazi, fascist. None of those things were used in our political dialogue until just the last, say, three years or so. Well, and you're absolutely correct, and I, and I, and I don't mean to uh, interject. Uh, I, I hate to stop you when you're rolling like this, but they also adopted violence. And if mm -hmm. you follow the alt-left like I do, they are celebrating the fact, the alt-left, that violence works. If you charge, if there's a conservative speaker somewhere, and you rush him or hit him or do something like he did to you. Yep. Uh, that that's a positive. It put it it makes conservatives less likely to speak in public. This mm -hmm. that's thuggery and uh, uh, that's the kind of thuggery that was advocated by Maxine Waters. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I get along with Maxine just fine. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> really? Yeah, she's just a uh, you know these unique personalities. I don't know. I have a kind of an affinity to make friends with them because it's not boring around somebody like Maxine. No, I believe. And, uh, she just can't resist you, Steve. Well, yeah, that's, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's, I, all, I, it's all that charisma and macho stuff, you know. That's, it, that's it just what it draws is. draws in Maxine <laughs> like a fly. Well, and, and, I, and I think that we need to have those kind of relationships, though, is that we, we argue like crazy in the, in the public arena. And when you walk out of there, you just cannot hold that grudge or otherwise it'll eat you up inside. Yeah. yeah. I, and, just, I, I just, I just, I think I'm above it, frankly. Well, <laughs> I don't mind and, mixing um, it up with them, but. But I just, I'll just dial back to this nationalist piece again, too. There's yeah. another component that I think is important for the listeners to hear. And that is that uh, when I talk to some of those leaders in the conservative parties across Europe, and I, I would refer to their parties as, uh, as nationalist parties because they want to restore the identity of their nation state, preserve their language and their culture. Those things are all noble things. No matter what your language and culture, you ought to be able to embrace it and be proud of it. That's what I learned with multiculturalism, wasn't it? And... Uh, so when I say, well, the culturalism is always a fake. I'm sorry. It, I'm, I I'm, agree. I'm interrupting you. I, I, no, I threw that in there just to tweak you. And Thank you very because much. Because I came to that same conclusion in about 1995 or so. Um, but um, but what they say, don't call us nationalist parties. 
because it has a negative connotation, call us patriotic parties. But I, it's th those terms mean one and the same here in the United States. If you're a nationalist like a Mike Define is or a Steve King is, and I call myself an American nationalist, you're a patriot. You right. want you defend your country. You want your country to be strong. You want our values to prevail. And if we think we don't like our values, we'll adopt somebody else's or create our own. But we have a set of values here that have made this the most successful nation in the world. And the rest of the world wants to come here. Why do they want to come here and change it? We have a faith here that has made our country the greatest. In the world. Yes. A faith and a discipline uh, that has made our country the greatest. And you, all of these things are only possible. Uh, a liberal can only think a certain way uh, if they believe our country has been uh, something terrible in the world. And they do. They do mm -hmm. believe that we're racist and sexist. And they, they, they're, they mainly feel terrible because we won the battle of history. Somebody was going to win the battle of history. And yes, history is about tribalism. These are my words, not Steve King's. But uh, uh, the United States, for all intents and purposes, especially after the Second World War, emerged as the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Mm -hmm. and, there, I don't, and there is something about liberals that they just drive. They, I, I guess it, their, 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 their desire to be uh, the best uh, out of a group or something. I don't know what it is about them. But they, they just can't stand that. They cannot well, stand that. I, I uh, when I was in the state Senate, so this would be going back a few years now, Mike, um, I was reading through the code of Iowa and um, I got to the chapter 20, the education chapter in the in the code. And it said in there, each child in Iowa shall receive a non sexist, a global non sexist multicultural education. And when I read that, I thought, my gosh, they're imposing that in all the curriculum oh, yeah. that exists. And so. It's kind of a middle of the night thing for me. I pulled down a bill draft request form and I wrote the bill draft request to strike that language out. And then I thought, you know what? If I introduce that legislation, then they're just going to accuse me of being against. I right. have to replace it with something. So I wrote a bill that replaced the, the language that required a global non-sexist multicultural education with this. Each child in Iowa shall be taught that the United States of America, of which Iowa is a vital constituent part, is the unchallenged greatest nation in the world. And we derive our strength from free enterprise capitalism, Judeo-Christianity, and Western civilization. There you go. And I filed that bill about four o'clock on, I believe it was a Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday morning, nearly every Democrat's light was on. And <laughs> they read from Mein Kampf and everything that you can imagine. Good. I had touched their nerve. Good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It was about an hour and 40 minutes of excoriation for uttering something that defended the principles that made this state in our country great. Yeah. And that, isn't that bizarre? And that's still what the argument's about, uh, Mike. And I'm in the middle of it yet. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do. I, I know you had dinner with Denny Plotz of the growth Alliance. I suppose you uh, really didn't talk about economic development, but the Iowa cyclone basketball game tonight, didn't you? Well, you know, we had lots of folks in uh, cyclone colors mm -hmm. and uh, I was happy to see that. And I'll certainly be focused in on that game tonight, but, we did talk about economic development, right. and, and in spite of the assault down at Mineral City, and that being a Colorado, and I'm going to make sure everybody knows that was not an individual that was a resident in Fort Dodge. And this community, I sure don't want this to spill over in any negative way right, on the folks right. here. This is, it is a terrific team and a great relationship we built. We're going to get together in a couple of weeks again. But um, so, you know, we went down to, and uh, had that discussion. And I took a look at that big bull elk at Danny Plotz's, and I hadn't seen that before. That is a nice, nice uh, machine animal there. But um, we did talk about economic development. We set the rest of this off on the side and focused. And uh, it set the stage for the meeting we'll have in Washington in a couple of weeks. That gives me an opportunity to queue up my staff, get the things ready, make their time as efficient as it can be. And um, that's uh, I want to compliment them again that not only have they um, have they stepped forward and done a good job of leadership here, but they built relationships with my staff that help it make it a lot easier for us to work with them. I, I do want to talk to you about your co committee assignments, uh, mm -hmm. especially in light of uh, Representative Ilham Omar and uh, AOC and some others. Uh, and uh, there is uh, rep represent the representative from Detroit who wants to imp impeach the MF or Trump and on and on and on. And to leave. All, all this. Yeah, to leave. Thank you. All these vulgar vulgar outbursts uh and you you uh you are still uh, in the doghouse with the republican uh leader of the house <laughs> mm -hmm. how's that working out <laughs> well it's kind of like i have been removed from my committees for something i didn't say mm -hmm. and they have their committees still even though no one disputes what they said but i want to say first off mike i'm not troubled by what they said 
though there's three of them out there that have gotten a lot of press and uh, we have a first amendment and if they want to utter the things that they think in their opinion i'd rather have them utter their opinions so that we can identify who they really are and mm -hmm. what their agenda is and what their ide ideology is then i would say we're going to censor you or censor me for that matter now the the, the thing in my case was I, I did not deliver that quote that the New York Times set up. And we searched back to see if I'd ever used those terms that identify, I called them the two odious ideologies. We did LexisNexis, which finds everything that's ever been in print. And to the year 2000, I had never used those words, never been quoted using those words. So I said, okay, but do a search for Western civilization because I defend it. Yeah. 276 times I've been quoted defending Western civilization, zero times that had ever been even uttered those other two terms. So who's telling the truth here, me or the, or the fake news in the New York Times? Did you say to the New York Times, what's wrong with white nationalism? No. Okay. You never said that? No. Okay, because that's that's has pretty much been the story. That's how they say all, it. Yeah. What's the matter with white nationalism? That's, that's well, what they say. That and, and, the, and the quote was strung together. It was, it was like a sentence started in the middle of a sentence, the way the quote came down. Mm -hmm. But there's no tape. There's no transcript. There's only his notes, which are he won't share. And he, he won't share. Right. And, he, and neither will he even tell us over the phone what question he thinks he asked. But I think that he asked, uh, the discussion was about the weaponization of language. Yeah. And and I, I am quoted in a Christian Science Monitor magazine that came out January 15th. But that interview took place before Christmas. It took them that long to write it, where I also speak of the uh, of the weaponization of language. And that's something that we need to have dialogue about. The word racist is applied to everybody today that and that's weaponized language, but it's losing its kick. So then they use Nazi, then they use fascist and they go on down through this. So if those words were even said by me, it was echoed by a question he asked me, set up that way. But it's a whole new sentence in thought to say Western civilization. How did that? That's that is a singular word. Not yeah. it doesn't include three ideologies. Western civilization. How did that language become offensive? Why did I sit in the classroom learning about the merits of our civilization just to learn that it would become a pejorative term today? That's what that statement was. Nobody sat in a classroom hearing about the merits of those odious ideologies in question. This is AM 1400 KVFT, the voice of Fort Dodge. Uh, we're going to go to the news here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, we do uh, we do have a breaking story here that happened in Fort Dodge. Uh, Representative King was, uh, Congressman King was over at uh, Mineral City here in our town. What happened after, after you got to Mineral City, sir? Well, what happened was uh, we're sitting there um, getting ready to have lunch with a scattering of folks in the leadership in the community, including the mayor and Danny Plotz and, and others. Um, and um, I did, I, I, I sat down kind of where that, where I was waved to be seated. And I'm looking at an empty chair across the other side that didn't have my back to the room. And I normally will never sit that way, but I yeah. made the same mistake Bill Hickok did. And, uh, <laughs> and so I'm sitting there and a um, young man, dark haired uh, with a beard, Black hair with a beard, Black hair with a beard. Uh, came came up behind me and he said down into my ear, are you Steve King? And I said, I said, yes, I am. And I, I turned back to actually shake his hand. And as I turned back, I turned my face in that direction. He threw a big full glass of water right in my face and all over me. So so my iPhone was down in the pouch that got soaked and my shirt and my suit got all soaked and all. What a man. And, <laughs> yeah, he was a brave soul. Uh, and uh, so I jumped up and grabbed him. So did a couple of the others. And I decided pretty soon I better not keep hanging on to him because who knows how that story gets spun. Yeah, you know what right. I know, but the temptation was great. Yeah. And I resisted it. But uh, then, you know, we, we, uh, his mother was there to defend him. It's nice the to know that his mother been... was there. Yes. How did she defend that? <laughs> well, hi, I'm here at lunch with mommy. Well, I think I'll go over and throw some water on a U.S. congressman. Uh, and mommy's going to have my back. She says she I works. love this story. It's, <laughs> it's liberalism personified. What did it she is. have to say? Well, in Sunny Boy's defense. Kind of to the effect of, no, he didn't do that. He didn't do it. And uh, we had about he was forced five of the community leaders there that said, oh, yes. 
And um, then we sat him down in the booth there for a little while, and she was trying to get him out of there. And I said, "Don't let I him bet leave. she was. Yes. <laughs> and so um, Jim Kirsten made sure that um, he wasn't going to get out the door. Jimmy boy. Jim is he's he's good, and I mean, and when it comes time to action, I'm happy he, to be he, in a foxhole with Jim. He's a Ford Dodge guy. Oh uh, yeah. And uh, then they you know they called the police, and an officer came down and took the reports from everybody. But they, they got no chance because we had the most stellar witnesses you could gather together in the really? city of Port Dodge. Well, I don't know yeah. about that. You know, there is a possibility he was trying to throw water at Plouts or Bemery. Well, <laughs> well, but it got you by mistake. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't think they were going to do that in there with those, with those fellows. But um, so. So did they arrest mommy and Sonny Boy and take him to the can? Or what? I don't know the answer to that. They, right. I think probably not, but I bet she went with him. And she oh, said, she did, holding his hand. She said, you better be careful with what you're doing. I work for a lawyer, she said. She said, so, said to who? I, I don't know who the lawyer is. But well, she, she, would she clean the place at night or what? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I just um, I, I work, I work in the middle lawyer. of the. Yeah, I, I work for a lawyer. Look out. I, I talk to a couple of lawyers, three, four of them every week on the air. <laughs> look out. I'm dangerous. <laughs> I've got a few lawyers that work for me, but I didn't I tell her that. Do, yeah. I and, uh, and, I, and I think of the quote of uh, it came from uh, Andy McKean, and he's in the state house now, but he was in the Senate when I was there, mm -hmm. a lawyer. And I remember standing on the floor of the Senate saying, I know that this is going to come as, surprised, as a surprise to a lot of you, but lawyers don't know everything. That's right. They don't. And That's right. of course, nobody can. But um, working for a lawyer doesn't get you in that category, and we'll see how this goes. Uh, but we're uh, we're looking at some of the legalities now. You, too. of course, know Representative Van Meyer. Representative, oh yeah, yeah, sure do. Mm -hmm. uh, well, her husband's uh, Dr. Jim Meyer, and I was mm -hmm. I went out to see him today, so that must make me medically proficient. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to a doctor. This there morning. you go. Representative King is our guest. Michael Devine, the mayor of Manville. It's a fancy title for a part-time job. <laughs> Michael Devine at AM 1400 KVFD. The other number one seeds are UNC, UVA, and Gonzaga. And I have a theory. I know this might be controversial, but here it is. I don't believe Gonzaga exists. <laughs> Michael Devine, the mayor of Manville. It's a fancy title for a part-time job. <laughs> Michael Devine at AM 1400 KVFD. See, that's liberal, liberal fist fighting. You know, that's uh, if you attack each other with water balloons, that's the liberal version of full-scale nuclear war. I have a somewhat different definition. When we invaded Cambodia, we didn't take water balloons. 2.32, news is coming up, then Representative Steve King. What if the kid who cut your grass worked like most financial advisors? Instead of a straight-up 20 bucks, you'd get some confusing bill with surcharges and add-ons. What the heck is a blade height adjustment fee? Creative planning is different. Our fiduciary advisors work off one transparent fee structure, and we never receive commissions on your investments. Call 866-CREATIVE or visit creativeplanning.com to learn more. Investment strategies recommended by Creative Planning are not assured of earning a profit or avoiding a loss in declining markets. Your news, your town, your station. KVFD News when it breaks. Good afternoon. I'm Alex Benzigal with the KVFD Afternoon News. The Iowa State Patrol says a Ford Dodge woman was killed in a two-vehicle accident Thursday afternoon. The accident happened on the Kenyon Road Bridge in Ford Dodge when a westbound 2006 Chevy Impala driven by 89-year-old Marvin Holsey of Ford Dodge crossed the raised median and struck an eastbound 2003 Dodge Dakota pickup truck driven by David L. Stone of Harcourt. A passenger in the Holsey car, 85-year-old Ruth Smith of Ford Dodge, was pronounced dead at the accident scene. Holsey was airlifted to a Des Moines hospital for treatment of his injuries. Stone was transported to Uni Point Trinity Regional Medical Center in Ford Dodge for treatment and was reported in stable condition. The Democratic governor of Louisiana and a Republican congressional leader are criticizing Iowa Congressman Steve King for King's remarks about hurricane victims in their state. King was in Charter Oak for a town hall meeting and compared victims of Hurricane Katrina in 2005 to Iowans dealing with floodwaters now. We're Iowans, and I'm always proud of our reaction to this. I've worked with the FEMA people for a long time, but here's what FEMA tells me. We go to a place like New Orleans, and everybody's looking around saying, who's going to help me, who's going to help me? And they're just always gratified when they come and see how Iowans take care of each other. And so that's a that's a point of pride that spreads across the country. Congressman Steve Scalise, the second ranking Republican in the House, represents the New Orleans suburbs. 
Scalise calls King's remarks absurd and offensive and a complete contradiction to how the people of New Orleans responded to the devastation of Hurricane Katrina. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards, a Democrat, tweeted that King's comments were disgusting and disappointing. King tweeted yesterday that he's working to restore free speech to the halls of Congress. During his remarks in Charter Oak yesterday, King said in 2005 he made four visits to New Orleans to tour the devastation. First member of Congress to go in down there. Um, he broke some rules to go there. I'll just confess to that. And uh, <clears throat> flew into the airport and just keep the mic and asked permission to land. And they gave it to us, so we went in. And uh, I saw that from the air and from the ground and went back and did what we could to help those folks down there. King toured flood damage in Missouri Valley and Hornick yesterday, promising to work closely with local leaders to help Iowans recover from the disaster. King said as the only Republican in Iowa's congressional delegation, he won't hesitate to use his influence with President Trump to help Iowans gain access to federal flood relief. A Northwest Iowa school principal has resigned, but it's unclear why, as Radio Iowa's Joel Herman reports. The Stormlight Community School District has accepted the resignation of Bo Rouleau as principal of the high school. District Superintendent Dr. Stacy Cole says the resignation is effective immediately following an investigation that revealed a violation of district policies. Cole says they want to assure families and community members that at no time was student safety compromised. The district will soon begin the process of finding the next high school principal. In the meantime, Cole will serve as acting principal. Joel Herman, Radio Iowa, Storm Lake. I'm Alex Benzgall with the KVFD Afternoon News. Have a great day. Here's the AM1400 KVFD weatherology forecast. Bright sunshine expected this afternoon with a high of 52. Northeasterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Lows level off around 29 tonight. Daytime highs approaching 55 tomorrow. Chance for scattered showers. High of 51 Sunday with a chance for scattered rain showers. D1 Monday. From the Weatherology Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Jennifer Wojcicki. Currently, it's 49. Here's a look at how the markets close today. May corn up to at 378 and a quarter. July up two cents at 387 and a half. September up one and a half at 393 and a quarter. And December up one and a quarter at four dollars even. May soybeans closed down six and three quarters at 903 and three quarters. July down seven at 917 and a quarter. August beans down seven at 923 and a quarter. And November down seven and a quarter at 937 and a half. May wheat closed down a half a penny at 466. Soybean meals down 30 cents a ton at 315. April live cattle down 17 at 129.72. June down 40 at 123.50. March feeder cattle up 22 at 143. April down 12 at 148.80. April lean hogs unchanged at 78.32 and May up 42 cents at 87.02. From the Alpha Media Farm Desk, I'm Dwayne Murley. Hey, I'm Andy. If you don't know me, it's probably because I'm not famous. But I did start a men's grooming company called Harry's. The idea for Harry's came out of a frustrating experience I had buying razor blades. Most brands were overpriced, overdesigned, and out of touch. At Harry's, our approach is simple. Here's our secret. We make sharp, durable blades and sell them at honest prices for as low as $2 each. We care about quality so much that we do some crazy things, like buy a world-class German blade factory. Obsessing over every detail means we're confident in offering a 100% quality guarantee. Millions of guys have already made the switch to Harry's, so thank you if you're one of them. And if you're not, we hope you give us a try with this special offer. Get a Harry starter set with a five-blade razor, weighted handle, shave gel, and a travel cover, all for just three bucks plus free shipping. Just go to harrys.com and enter 1616 at checkout. That's harrys.com, code 1616. Enjoy. This is, this is AM 1400 KBFD, The Voice of Florida. It's 2.38. We'll be back with Congressman Steve King in just a minute. Obituaries this hour brought to you by Gunderson Funeral Home and Cremation Services at 1615 North 15th Street, Fort Dodge. You may contact Gunderson Funeral Home and Cremation Services by calling 515-576-7128 or online at www.gundersonfuneralhome.com. Mr. Thomas Kimball Jr. has passed away. His services for Mr. Kimball will be tomorrow afternoon at 2.15 at the Lighthouse Ministries Church visitation from 12 to 2 prior to the service. Mr. Robert Knutson has died. Services for Mr. Knutson will be at 11 o'clock. We're at 11 o'clock this morning at Tompkins Celebration Center. Obituaries this hour brought to us by Gunderson Funeral Home and Cremation Services at 1615 North 15th Street, Fort Dodge. 
You may contact Gunderson Funeral Home and Cremation Services by calling 515-576-7128 or online at www.gundersonfuneralhome.com. It's 239 at AM 1400 KBFD. Gunderson Funeral Home and Cremation Services. Oh, why not just cremate me when I'm gone? Sounds simple, doesn't it? However, there are many options to consider when cremation is chosen. From simple to detailed, we at Gunderson Funeral Home and Cremation Services can help you create a unique commemoration. Gunderson Funeral Home and Cremation Services. Your data isn't just a record of what's happening. It's your fields telling you what they need. The Climate Field View platform gives you the tools to listen more clearly. Manage your entire farm in one easy to use digital tool. Streamline your operation and get the most out of every acre by collecting your data in one place and evaluating crop performance to find out what works and what doesn't. With these insights, you can make data-driven agronomic decisions to maximize your yield and profitability. And now, you can get the first 12 months of your FieldView Plus subscription and a FieldView Drive starter kit for free. Contact your local dealer or go to climate.com slash free dash trial to learn more. Some restrictions apply. Offer valid through 831-2019. Climate FieldView services provide estimates or recommendations and do not guarantee results. More information at climate.com slash disclaimers. Michael Devine, the doctor of truth. Does anyone have anything they'd like to confess? That AM 1400 KBFT. Who are you then? Just a fly in the ointment, Hans. A monkey in the wrench. A pain in the ass. Michael Devine, broadcasting live. That's right, a monkey in the wrench, pain in the ass. That's me, AM 1400 KBFT, the voice of Fort Dodge. I'm on the air with Congressman Steve King. And uh, again, uh, we've had some news. You'll be hearing about it in other radio stations, newspapers tomorrow, television stations this evening. Congressman King was over at Mineral City a little earlier, and uh, somebody from Colorado came up behind him, asked if he was Congressman King. Of course, uh, Congressman King uh, applied in, replied in the affirmative. Guy threw a glass of water on him. What a class act. What a class mm-hmm. act. You know, they had to. Ha- couldn't you have gone over to uh, Marshalltown or Ames and done this sort of thing? Why do you have to do it in our town? Why? Why has it got to be Fort Dodge, Iowa? Some guy throws water on Congressman. King. Well, I'm just glad he wasn't from Fort Dodge. Yeah. And and then um, of course it'd be nice if we could just not have that kind of thing going on at all. Right. And uh, you know, you, you just have to when you think about an event like that. I have never heard of that happening in the state of Iowa to any elected official yeah. ever. Uh, so. If, I would say this, that if you would just dial back, say, 10 years and have not all have the poison that spilled out by social media, by the mainstream media, the dishonest media that is there, they have created this acrimony in the, in the streets of the country. Uh-huh. And that's why they get to that position where they think they can do something like that. Well, on 60 Minutes here a week or two ago, uh, there was uh, there was uh, an interview with the uh, previous uh, director of ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union, which is, of course, is a very liberal group. Well, it's seen as a liberal group. But the previous director of the ACLU said, we are losing our object- objectivity in the ACLU. They have defended Nazis and every real Nazis, uh, genuine mm-hmm. Nazis, as well as uh, people from the left who are very unpopular in our country. That's been the ACLU's mission. Uh, under Mr. Romero, Anthony Romero, it is he has made the ACLU part of the resistance. That's a big jump for the ACLU, mm-hmm. and they apparently have a lot of money because of donations. They the ACLU, like the Southern Poverty Law Center, uh, scares liberals into uh, donating. And by the way, I'd really like to know why Morris D. Saint Morris yes. of D's was dismissed from uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center. Uh, there, <laughs> Morris D's is a fundraiser, ladies and gentlemen. Look into his past. He's nothing but a hustler. And he's practically revered. He's 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 revered by the left. And he's just a mm-hmm. big phony. And he's he's turned the Southern Poverty Law Center into a half a billion dollar endowment yes, fund. Yes, he has. And uh, the, those, guys, those guys live like kings. D's and the top eight, uh, mm-hmm. SBLC and, guys. And if you read between the lines on the reason for his departure, it was abrupt, and they tried to put a lid on it. But the the tone of that indicates that perhaps he's a victim of the Me Too movement. I think that's yeah. exactly right. Mm-hmm. That's that's how I hit it. And 
I have dealt with the SPLC a good number of times when they're brought in to testify before the Judiciary Committee in the House of Representatives, and it always was just, uh, I'll say, blatant biased. I cannot believe that the, the Southern Poverty Law Center is any kind of an objective operation at all. It is, um, they have an agenda, and they want to break down the values of this country, and I'm convinced of that. And so, um, you know, I'm a little cautious about saying some of the other things that I happen to know about the SPLC. But if they get to decide who is a hate group and who is a, a you know, who, who is a, a, a hateful individual, and they do do that, they've been essentially handed that authority by whatever, whatever reason it is, then they're passing a judgment on everybody else. And some of the people that they've named as a hater, a racist, somebody that's in a hater, a race group, um, that is... Um, it's always a conservative that's named. It's never a liberal. And so um, there's a, I'd be happy if we didn't have to deal with them again. And uh, the ACLU, uh, when they used to be objective about protecting, I had some, I had a, you know, a, a working relationship with them when I was in the state Senate because they would defend constitutional rights. But that's all gone out the window now. And it's all about it's all about a leftist agenda. And it's twisting our Constitution instead of protecting it. I, uh, I know Randy Feenstra. He's a good guy. Uh, he is challenging you. He said some nasty things about you. Uh, you remarked, as I recall, during our last conversation that, uh, well, there's actually two challengers out there for the Republican mm -hmm. nomination. Maybe Mr. even Feenstra. three. Maybe even three. I don't know who the Sioux City guy is. I certainly know Randy Feenstra. But anyway, you remarked that uh, uh, part of the reason, uh, maybe to your mind anyway, is that there are big agricultural concerns in Iowa's congressional fourth district who want illegal immigrant labor. I, I've, I spend a lot of time with farm groups. I, I'm a big supporter of agriculture, but I can tell you that's true. Uh, they want workers. And my response to them is always, pay some money. They'll come. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, there were big wages in Detroit in the early part of the 20th century, and there was a huge migration from the South. I mean, that's how you attract workers. And in Wisconsin, it was beer and big wages, yeah. and they migrated to Milwaukee. That's right. That's right. Uh, is that, have you heard any more about that? I, I mean, you suspected that the last time I talked with mm -hmm. you. Do you know that for a fact now or? Well, I, I will when I see his donor list, it'll be published here pretty soon. And uh, at that point, we'll be able to see. Yeah. Uh, but um, I would, I would just say that if others want to take a look at that and draw their own judgment, I'm pretty confident that there will be employers of illegal aliens that are major donors to Randy Feinster's campaign. Uh, yeah. These are big ag guys. I mean, they're usually guys who are, uh, who, uh, well, who's for you? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, have they had a change of heart? I mean, you you have been uh, very clear on establishing the rule of law when it comes to illegal immigration, which, again, makes our liberal friends, in, you know, in this movie they got going about themselves. You know, they're resistance fighters and, you know, they might be fat 50 year old women, but they're out there on the uh, uh, they in, in their minds are these peoples with with swords and shields with, uh, you know, with a crusader cross and all thing. That's the way they see themselves. Uh, so, uh, uh, have you, have you seen or heard of any, from anything of these, uh, from, uh, any of these big ag groups well, who have been your supporters? I, I don't, I don't want to imply or let alone indict the big ag groups because I mean, the big five are farm bureau, corn beans, cattle, and hogs. None of those organizations have expressed this thing to me in any strong way. Right. I think the organizations are sound, but there are the individuals that may be members of those organizations that have pushed very hard for their very narrow uh, economic interests. And that is cheap labor. And they want me to legalize their employees. And I've been through those conversations for enough years. And often it's, uh, it's wrapped in the cloak of virtue. Uh, that is that we're helping them out. Uh, and there is a family that, well, I guess it better not be any more specific than that. But um, they, they, they contend that they're helping these families out, that they wouldn't have as good a life if they, if they, if they left them in their home country. They, and they say, God's called me to do this. Some of them do. And so, um, but what they leave out is it is cheap labor and they are making money off of this and it oh, is their it. life's work. And why would they be so serious about this? Why would they be ready to throw their congressman over the side over immigration if they didn't already have illegal employees? Oh, come on. That, that's, that's the worst kept secret in the, in the that's country right. is that Big Egg knowingly mm -hmm. employs illegal immigrants. Mm -hmm. They recruit them. I mean, uh, Storm Lake, where Art Cullen uh, writes, uh, Storm Lake, uh, they they re rejuvenated that town through essentially slave labor. And Art Cullen, and, I, and I've written about this and spoken about this in the past, Art Cullen's uh, stance uh, supposedly is, 
in favor of uh, illegal aliens because of his his humanity and his deep respect for the human being and blah, 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 blah. Nonsense. He's speaking on behalf of the advertisers of Buena Vista County who enjoy slave labor or illegal immigrant labor, whichever way you'd like to speak it. He <laughs> is speaking for his advertisers, some of his advertisers in those big plants over there. So oh, that's yes. That's what he's doing. And he's been, he's been this, on that he, agenda for a long time. He is not St. Art of Cullen. He's just a mouthpiece for some big, big ag concerns over there who love cheap immigrant labor and exploitable you know, labor. You know, and, and Mike, I, of course, I've watched this for a long time and been a middle of this debate for a long time. And when you, when you watch how things shift, I mean, I, I can think, for example, um, when I walked into public life, I never, I never accepted the idea that we should allow someone who is unlawfully present in America to live as our neighbor in our communities. They, they need to be removed and placed in a place where they can mm -hmm. wake up legal. That's what our law says. And uh, here about, oh, I bet it was 16, 17 years ago, I had a conversation with a county sheriff, not in this county, who said, I have an illegal alien that lives next door to me. And congratulations. I sheriff. like her. And so... I'm not going to do anything and I'm not going to tell anybody. Must be good to be the king. Must be good. I thought yes. you were the king, but he, well, he, he must be the king. And when you use the term slave labor, um, and I, and I, and I haven't been using that, but it's, it's descriptive. And when you said that, I thought, let me see if you have slave labor, you have to sustain the standard of living, a place to live, food, clothing, and shelter at a minimum. And that's, that's what slave labor required. But this is the taxpayers subsidizing up to uh, the, the food, clothing, and shelter level. If when the wages aren't high enough to sustain somebody in the community, but the welfare program has to supplement that, that's worse than slave labor. That's subsidized slavery. And a slave really has no choice but to remain a slave. Now, there have been a lot of reports from some of these big chicken houses around here that uh, these people are, 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 are virtual slaves. They're 21st the 21st century definition of slavery. It's, it, it may not be as stark as 19th century or 18th century uh, versions of slavery, but it is in fact slavery. And we have, again, there they are again, ladies and gentlemen, moving across their own moviescape, liberals in their own movies, seeing themselves as saviors, and they're all, you know, they're so concerned with humanity, and I'm so good. Uh, actually, they're self-involved, narcissistic, uh, selfish people who who uh, like slave labor. <laughs> yep. Um, and there's um there there you probably seen the gumball video that Roy Dr. Roy Beck did back in about 1991 or right. two, and uh, he shows how if we um that it takes the population of the earth, people we have in the United States, and then the, the, some of the other balances out there, and it'll take a gumball out and say, okay, so we bring a million in this year, put them in this jar called America. While that happens, there's a whole number of millions of others that are born in the world. And then you take another million the next year and you put that gumball in this in this beaker jar. And after a while, uh, the population that's growing at multiple times spills out over the top, rolls all over the floor. It illustrates clearly we can't relieve the, the poverty in the world by bringing people into America. That equation is, is the opposite. It, can, it do, cannot happen, but we can help people and we can lift up economies. We can inspire them. We can teach them rule of law, clean up your corruption, free enterprise capitalism, education. We did that in the Philippines. And a half a century after we went to the Philippines with 1,074 teachers, priests, pastors in our military, we handed over the educational system to the Philippines before the Second World War. And they had it all set up on their own. Speak in English, free enterprise capitalism, American work ethic, and American curriculum. And, th and then Gloria Arroyo, the president of the Philippines, came to the U.S. in 2004 to say, thank you, America. You transformed our islands. And she said, send us more teachers. That's wonderful. And that's the foundation for the Peace Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, you probably noticed that when uh, Congressman King and I are in the room alone, he's the liberal. <laughs> well, Congress, well, Congressman well, Steve King, liberal. How's that fix you? You hurt me so <laughs> deep, Mike. <laughs> but you did get yourself in trouble now with Congressman Steve Scalise. You were, uh, of course, a part of Fourth District. Well, most of Fourth District, but certainly down around Hamburg, Iowa. And I know where Hamburg is, and in, in the southwest part of the uh, the state, they've been hit really bad with flooding. And we have, mm -hmm. uh, I have never had water in my basement before this year, but I do this huh. year. And I'm not happy to report that. Anyway, there's been a lot of flooding in Iowa. And you made the observation that, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, or maybe I should let you tell, repeat what you said. 
Well, I just I told a narrative at a town hall meeting in Charter Oak, Iowa, yesterday morning uh, that in talking with FEMA people, FEMA personnel, not their you know their elected representatives, not their top uh, management people, but rank and filers, uh, they said they'd worked around this, the country and including Katrina. And when they go places like that, then people are coming out and they're saying, "What are you going to do to help me? What are you going to do to help me?" And they told the narrative this way. But when we come to Iowa, we'll go to a house that's got water in the basement. We'll knock on the door and say, we can help you and just use the name John. And, uh, and John will say, well, just a minute. He'll go get his boots, put his boots on and say, let's go down and help Joe. He needs it more than I do. Right. That's the Iowa character. And that's what I, that's exactly what I delivered yesterday. I'm, I'm giving Iowans compliments for being self-reliant and, they seem to be taking offense at that because they can't meet that standard in in New Orleans. Now, are are they trying? I, I I haven't heard the whole story. Are they trying to make it about because there's a lot of black people in New Orleans? Oh, I did see a little clip of that pop up somewhere. That um, yes, yeah, since um, since New Orleans is a majority black community, uh -huh. that means that I'm a racist for ah, saying that. That's right, you're a racist. And man. they forget that I made four trips into Katrina. I did all I could to help them down there, and more than any other member of Congress did, unless they happen to live there. Mm. And uh, I went down and walked the lower ninth ward when my security detail wouldn't let me go there because it was too dangerous. I walked there anyway, and I went in and talked to those folks that were cleaning out their houses. And that's a nearly, I'd say that's a hundred percent black community in there. Mm -hmm. And um, then I went down and painted houses in the same lower ninth ward. So I've done my part for Katrina. I saw it with my own eyes. The video clips are out there and there's got to be hours of video clips that support what I said. And we know Iowans and, and, yes. I, and the folks in Missouri Valley, they were, they were for the first time they were, they were surrounded, couldn't get in and couldn't get out. They had about 55 official personnel and lots of volunteers they saved at least two lives in Missouri Valley, getting um, people that were not mobile, that were sitting in water with ice floating. They were minutes from death. Sure. And and that's Missouri Valley. Up the up the road in Hornick, uh, an hour up the road in Hornick, those folks, small town, less than 300 people. And they made decisions. And they were bold and strong. And they worked day and night. I talked to a guy that worked three days straight without laying down. And then they ordered him to go lay down. I said, how long did you sleep? He said, four hours. There's work to be done. Uh, that's what's going on in this state right now. And I highlighted that and I will not back up or apologize for it. And I drew a contrast that's real and Americans should be able to remember what they saw on television when Katrina hit. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was quite the story then. Uh, so I, I, I guess, uh, again, Congressman Scalise and I, there was another Congressman or, or maybe one of the senators, Cedric John, Richmond, Cedric Richmond. Don't know who said it. Richmond. He is. Um, he is an African American. I think he played some pro ball. Oh, uh, really? He's a pitcher for the Democrats' baseball team. Oh, yeah. And uh, he's uh, he's a he's a pretty edgy individual. Um, when he um, in the Judiciary Committee sometime last year, we had an altercation in there. Um, you they, were brawling with Cedric. He wanted to. He wanted he to said, duke you out. If 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 I if if I if I hear another word. We can go back behind the chambers and we'll settle it back there. Is he big? He's well. He's a pro athlete. Pro athlete. Yeah. yeah. All right. And I'm, you know, I'm a fat guy. You're a fat old guy. <laughs> I'm not as fat as I was, Mike. But I'm, <laughs> yeah. But but anyway, if you can't have an open dialogue, and the discussion was there, this they were saying, well, we've got we've got to bring these these young people out of Central America because the crime rate's so high down there, and bring them into America to save them. And Who said that? This is people like Cedric Richmond oh, and Cedric. others. And I don't know it's exactly out of him, but it could have been Sheila Jackson Lee or yeah. Zola Lofgren or any of them. And and I, I think said, Sheila Jackson Lee is a dude, by the way. But go ahead. Well, and she uh, <laughs> and uh, and anyway, and I said, well, nine of the ten most violent countries in the world are south of our southern border, mm -hmm. and you're bringing them out of the highest crime rates you can find anywhere. But if you think you're going to relieve them from a high crime rate, you'd better not take them to New Orleans or East St. Louis or Detroit because there's a higher violent death rate in those communities than there is where they're coming from. That was a racist comment, according to Cedric <laughs> Richmond. I had expressed white privilege because I used white some data. White privilege? Yes. Oh, how could I have forgotten to ask you to define white privilege? Yes. Well, it's a it's white a, fragility. We're fragile and we're privileged. And we are, oh, we're, God. but we're not the snowflakes. We're, Mike. That's right. We're not. <laughs> and we don't sneak up behind somebody with our mom and dump water on you. Either. 
that's that's a first for me oh man that's the so, first in the state that's uh maybe even the country yeah i suppose so well, but i'm proud of that aussie that fought his way out of that egg yeah he decked that's that kid man a, yeah he did yeah the kid came up behind him and hit him with an egg and the guy just decked him he had a good left i guess he really that. did yeah well this guy was running away and i jumped up and grabbed him and so did and so did mark and others that were there and after a mark little while Campbell. yeah all right and um so and I thank them all. I mean, they were they were ready. And but I thought, well, as soon as they got him under control, I better not be part of that because you know how this world goes. I know. Uh, Congressman Steve King's been our guest. The hour's gone too fast, sir. Thank you. It has. Me. Enjoyed uh, it a lot. Thanks, Mike. All right. Three o'clock in the afternoon, AM fourteen hundred KBFD. For exciting Panther sports, keep it right here on your home for University of Northern Iowa sports in North Central Iowa. The voice of Fort Dodge, KVFD, Fort Dodge. An anxious end to the week on Wall Street. Lisa Brady, Fox News. The Dow down 460 points at the closing bell after dropping during the session on renewed fear of an economic slowdown. That's getting much of the blame. The Dow and the S&P sliding more than 1%. The Nasdaq falls more than 2%. A big jump in damage estimates from Midwest flooding. Governor Kim Reynolds of Iowa has submitted the application for expedited emergency relief to the president. It's a very detailed request, and it says the impact from the flood to Iowa alone is $1.6 billion. That includes 25,000 structures damaged and 70 miles of levees that failed. Fox's Mike Tobin that makes the total so far in several states more than $3 billion. New sanctions on North Korea? Apparently not happening after all. Fox's John Decker, live at the White House. President Trump reversed administration policy in a tweet declaring he would unwind new sanctions on North Korea that the Treasury Department rolled out just a day before. In a follow-up statement explaining the reversal, Press Secretary Sarah Sanders said President Trump likes Chairman Kim and he doesn't think these sanctions will be necessary. The president appeared to be referring to an announcement on Thursday in which the Treasury Department said it was sanctioning two China-based shipping companies accused of helping North Korea evade existing economic sanctions. Lisa? John General Motors says it will build a new electric vehicle in Michigan instead of China, as previously planned. But CEO Mary Barra is suggesting the decision is not a response to recent criticism from President Trump over the closing of a plant in Ohio as part of restructuring. When we talk about jobs and investing in the U.S. workforce and the American worker, that's where you know General Motors and I think the president are very aligned. We want to create jobs, a good paying jobs. Barra says she's making decisions aimed at ensuring GM remains a strong company. This is Fox News. Texting and rules for recurring automated marketing text messages. Message to data rates may apply. Texting privacy rules in terms of conditions at textrules.us. Has dinner got you down? Sick of awful frozen meals or unhealthy fast food? Don't despair because Martha Stewart is doing a free taste test, giving away three full-sized meals from her new meal kit delivery service, Martha and Marley Spoon. All fresh ingredients with Martha's delicious and easy recipes. You're eating in just 30 minutes. To be part of Martha's at-home taste test and get three free meals, be one of the first hundred people to text the word food to 246810. It's so easy. Text us now. Martha and Marley spoon meals are easy, simple, and delicious. And right now, Martha wants you to enjoy three of her best 30-minute meals for free so you can save time and enjoy eating dinner again. To be part of Martha's at-home taste test and get your three free meals, be one of the first hundred people to text food to 246810. That's food to 246810. Food to 246810 says the last ISIS-held territory in Syria has been captured, though fighting has continued with a few holdout fighters today. A final decision on the number of U.S. troops that will stay there not yet made. The primary goal we gather is to prevent ISIS from coming back again. It's to hunt down their leaders. But of course, other geopolitical concerns, pushing back on the Shia crescent that Iran has built, making sure that the Assad regime doesn't push up and that Turkey doesn't come and attack the Kurds who have fought so valiantly alongside America. Fox's Benjamin Hall in eastern Syria. A teenager under arrest accused of making the racially charged threats that shut down schools in one Virginia city. Nine of Charlottesville schools closed for a second day today after police say a 17-year-old made racially based threats to minority students at Charlottesville High School. Even though this threat has been resolved, the fear and anxiety that it provoked is real. 
Schools Superintendent Rosa Atkins, police say the teen posted messages online about ethnic cleansing. The suspect reportedly not a student at any of Charlottesville schools. Joy Piazza, Fox News. Charlottesville was the scene of a deadly confrontation during a white nationalist rally in 2017. More fallout from a college admissions cheating scandal as another coach steps down. UCLA head men's soccer coach Jorge Salcedo resigned Thursday, this after his indictment last week, for allegedly taking payments totaling $200,000 as part of that extensive college admissions and testing bribery scheme that rocked higher education. Salcedo allegedly took payment from the scheme's orchestrator Rick Singer in exchange for helping admit one male and one female applicant to the school while pretending they were UCLA soccer recruits. Neither played competitive soccer. Salcedo had been the second longest tenured men's soccer coach in UCLA history. Matt Napolitano, Fox News. Recapping the Wall Street sell-off, the Dow drops 460 points. I'm Lisa Brady. This is Fox News. Your news, your town, your station. KVFD News when it breaks. Good afternoon, I'm Alex Benzigal with the KVFD Afternoon News. The Iowa State Patrol says a Ford Dodge woman was killed in a two-vehicle accident Thursday afternoon. The accident happened on the Kenyon Road Bridge in Ford Dodge when a westbound 2006 Chevy Impala driven by 89-year-old Marvin Holsey of Ford Dodge crossed the raised median and struck an eastbound 2003 Dodge Dakota pickup truck driven by David L. Stone of Harcourt. A passenger in the Holsey car, 85-year-old Ruth Smith of Fort Dodge, was pronounced dead at the accident scene. Holsey was airlifted to a Des Moines hospital for treatment of his injuries. Stone was transported to Uni Point Trinity Regional Medical Center in Fort Dodge for treatment and was reported in stable condition. The Democratic governor of Louisiana and a Republican congressional leader are criticizing Iowa Congressman Steve King for King's remarks about hurricane victims in their state. King was in Charter Oak for a town hall meeting and compared victims of Hurricane Katrina in 2005 to Iowans dealing with floodwaters now. We're Iowans, and I'm always proud of our reaction to this. I've worked with the FEMA people for a long time, but here's what FEMA tells me. We go to a place like New Orleans, and everybody's looking around saying, who's going to help me, who's going to help me? And they're just always gratified when they come and see how Iowans take care of each other. And so that's a that's a point of pride that spreads across the country. Congressman Steve Scalise, the second ranking Republican in the House, represents the New Orleans suburbs. Scalise calls King's remarks absurd and offensive and a complete contradiction to how the people of New Orleans responded to the devastation of Hurricane Katrina. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards, a Democrat, tweeted that King's comments were disgusting and disappointing. King tweeted yesterday that he's working to restore free speech to the halls of Congress. During his remarks in Charter Oak yesterday, King said in 2005 he made four visits to New Orleans to tour the devastation. First member of Congress to go in down there. Um, he broke some rules to go there. I'll just confess to that. And uh, <clears throat> flew into the airport and just keep the mic and asked permission to land. They gave it to us, so we went in. And uh, I saw that from the air and from the ground and went back and did what we could to help those folks down there. King toured flood damage at Missouri Valley and Hornick yesterday, promising to work closely with local leaders to help Iowans recover from the disaster. King said as the only Republican in Iowa's congressional delegation, he won't hesitate to use his influence with President Trump to help Iowans gain access to federal flood relief. A Northwest Iowa school principal has resigned, but it's unclear why, as Radio Iowa's Joel Herman reports. The Storm Lake Kennedy School District has accepted the resignation of Bo Rouleau as principal of the high school. District Superintendent Dr. Stacy Cole says the resignation is effective immediately following an investigation that revealed a violation of district policies. Cole says they want to assure families and community members that at no time was student safety compromised. The district will soon begin the process of finding the next high school principal. In the meantime, Cole will serve as acting principal. Joel Herman, Radio Iowa, Storm Lake. I'm Alex Benzgal with the KVFD Afternoon News. Have a great day. Here's the AM1400 KVFD weatherology forecast. Bright sunshine expected this afternoon with a high of 52. Northeasterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Lows level off around 29 tonight. Daytime highs approaching 55 tomorrow. Chance for scattered showers. High of 51 Sunday with a chance for scattered rain showers. D1 Monday. From the Weatherology Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Jennifer Wojcicki. Currently, it's 51. 
Take the worry out of winter with a winter weather advisor on KVFD brought to you by Community Health Center Fort Dodge, offering dental, behavioral health, and general medical assistance for men, women, and children. They're committed to your well-being. Community Health Center, get to know them. And Creative Cakes, making life sweet with espresso, lunch, gourmet cupcakes, and other sweet treats. Creative Cakes in the Crossroads Mall, Fort Dodge. They make life sweet. Listen for the winter weather advisor on the voice of Fort Dodge, AM 1400 KVFD. In today's economy, it just makes sense to plan ahead. At Historic Bruce Funeral Home, pre-planning your funeral arrangements can save you money. By planning ahead, you can secure your arrangements at today's prices, no matter when our services are needed. Pre-planning your funeral is one of the most thoughtful things you can do for your family. Call us for details. Historic Bruce Funeral Home, Fort Dodge. Online at brucesfuneralhome.com. If you like rye bread, you're going to love what Village Hearth is baking now. Our three special rye recipes are the perfect start to deli favorites, like a hot and cheesy Reuben or a grilled ham and cheese sandwich. Whether you prefer yours with caraway seeds or without, or even a darker pumpernickel rye, all are high fructose corn syrup free and satisfyingly delicious. Bring out the flavor of all your sandwich favorites with Village Hearth rye breads, the perfect answer to What's for lunch? Village Hearth, baking our best. Michael Devine, the mayor of Manville. It's a fancy title for a part-time job. (laughs) Michael Devine at AM 1400 KVFD. The other number one seeds are UNC, UVA, and Gonzaga. And I have a theory. I know this might be controversial, but here it is. I don't believe Gonzaga exists. (laughs) Michael Devine, the mayor of Manville. It's a fancy title for a part-time job. (laughs) Michael Devine at AM 1400 KVFD. Well, I tell you, the Iowa Hawkeyes exist. They got off to a real sloppy start. Didn't look good after the first half, but they came roaring back in the second, and they beat the Cincinnati Bearcats. All right, that's good news. The other good news is that we have Representative Ann Meyer in the studio. How are you, Representative? I'm doing great. How are you, Mike? Well, I'm real good. You know, uh, uh, of course, we had the outrage in town today. Uh, with some guy from Colorado throwing a full glass of water on uh, our uh, congressman. Uh, and that's uh, that's not the way we do things in the state of Iowa. If he wants to throw water on somebody or whatever he wants to throw, let him go back home and do it because he's unwelcome here. He, this is not the way we do things in Iowa. We didn't anyway. Right. I hope this isn't a, a corner that we're another bad corner that we're turning. Well, it very well could be. I mean, uh, the... Uh, the attitude of the Democratic Party seems to be that there is no outrage, nothing can be said or done that's too severe to get them back in power and to embarrass some conservative politician or even to harm them. And uh, I, I await the judgment of the public on that attitude. Uh, I await, I, and I, if, if we can't condemn this sort of behavior, uh, we are no longer a civilized people. You know, Mike, um, When I was knocking on doors, this has been happening, uh, you know, during my whole campaign for the, you know, past two years, because, you know, I was pretty much running for Mm -hmm. two years. Um, That's something I heard more often than not. What is it coming down to when people can't work together, where you can't have a civil uh, conversation about your disagreements? Again, I know I I say this over and over. We, uh, both parties, I believe, agree on 90% of the issues. Again, we just have a little bit different way of getting there, but um, everyone is tired of the, uh, you don't believe this, you're an idiot. Um, (laughs) Really? Really? And they're tired of that. Um, We don't, for them, I want to say that people that I met in Fort Dodge at the door, they don't, they don't believe that they they feel that civil civility should be alive and well, and it's and and I think for the most part it is. We're very civil in the uh, Iowa House. I can mm-hmm. tell you that we work together um, side by side, working on the same issues to make the state better, to make our systems better. Um, but what is publicized? Are the things that we do together for the good of Iowa? You don't hear too much about on the news. What do you hear about? The little disagreements or the the sound bites that come up. The pettiness. And pettiness, yeah. And I, I, 
my colleagues across the aisle, um, I for the most part, they do not. They do not act like that. No, I'm sure that they don't. You know, I've met Joe Bulk. I mean, I mean, Joe Bulk. <laughs> this may sound strange <laughs> to a lot of people. But uh, uh, anytime I want Senator Joe Bochum of the People's Republic of uh, Johnson County on the air, I call him. And he says, sure, Mike, I think that can be worked out. As opposed to Representative Scrappy Sexton and Rep <laughs> State Senator Kreinbrink. Oh, I don't want to answer any questions about me and him. I better go hide. I better. I'm just, oh, oh I, I'm not positive that that's why. I know. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm convinced. They're being Senator's got, he has a business that he has to take no, care understand. of yeah, yeah, yeah and mike i i he i know that he had to go up and down from minneapolis last night um so drove out and drove back from a funeral and i'm i'm sure that this wears on you and I, it, he says he's ill i i believe you he's believe Ill. Him? yeah I you do. don't think it's because they're both weenies I, I do not. They are not. They are not. <laughs> I know. Okay. They're right. good guys. I'll take your word for it then. I was about to give uh, Representative Sexton a different name, the Wimster, but if you say he's still the Scrapster, okay, I'll go with it. Yeah, I don't think we want to hear that coming no. down the parade route. No. Hey, <laughs> hey, Wimster. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a question or a comment for Representative Meyer? It's 515-955-1400, 515-955-1400. Excuse me, I still got that doggone cough I saw your husband for this morning. It didn't go away quite yet. It, it, uh, you mean you haven't been cured in the last four hours? I haven't been cured since 10 o'clock this morning, no. Shoot. <laughs> Shoot, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, how was your what was your week like uh, down in Des Moines? My week was great in Des okay. Moines. So it was a week. Uh, we had very few committee meetings. I, I did pick up. So what's happening now is funnel week was over. Right. Um, we're debating the bills in the House that made it through House committee. So we'll be doing that for a, a few weeks. So we did it this week. We'll do it next week, the week after. And then we'll get. Uh, the well, in committee, we'll be working on the Senate bills that made it through funnel. So first the bill passes through one house, then it has to pass mm -hmm. through the same process of the second house. And then it'll go if, if the bill can make it through both houses, it'll finally go to the governor. OK, so what uh, what are some of the bills that have made it through the house? OK, we Let, had. A, let's talk about that mid end thing that that hasn't made it through the house right. yet. Um uh, do you want to talk about that first? I do want to lead off with that. I I was going to bug uh, Scrappy about that, but he didn't show us. So. Well, um, I got three big expensive pieces of mail in my house um, uh, encouraging people to contact me about it, uh, to support it. Um, you know, I'm still collecting some information, but from everything I've learned so far, I'm inclined to support it. I don't uh, know why that is, Ann. Could you explain it, please? Uh, yes, yes, I will. So what's, what's going on is um, there are some solar customers that have their, they put their panels up, they had their tax credits, they get, you know, yes. so they'll get paid back. So it, it, solar energy is very clean. Yes. And and we want to promote that. Yes. Without a doubt. Um, what happens though is solar customers use the grid as well. They uh, the infrastructure for the power lines. Yes, they do. So we need to maintain that in infrastructure. So right now, solar customers are completely ex excluded from that maintenance. And right. so what happens is the cost, if, if you've got 10 people on your street and um, let's say four of them have solar, the cost of maintaining the grid is not uh, divided by 10. It's divided right now just by the six people who uh, get their, buy their power from the power company. Right. Okay. Um, if everyone's using the grid, probably everyone should pay into it a little bit. This isn't going to, to uh, push their rates up to what, what electric customers are using, number one. But number two, if you are one of those customers that are using solar panels right now, this isn't going to affect you because you're going to be grandfathered in. So that's one thing. 
Um, do we, the, some of the misinformation that's out there is. Here, this is what Dwight Dial, a farmer and educator from Lake City, said on this radio station yesterday. And he is someone who uses solar panels. He said that when he sells, tries to sell his excess energy to uh, Mid-Am, they won't pay him for half. They'll take it all, but they'll only pay him for half. Further, the half they will buy back, they tell him how much that uh, they'll pay him. That sounds like a monopoly to me. AM 1400 KVFD, the boys for Dodge. Good afternoon. You're on the air. Thank you. This is Mike Baroni. This is... Uh, and I wanted to... I wanted to invite Congressman King to be in our Frontier Days Parade on June 1st. Uh, Congressman King isn't in the room, but I ha I can text him. And uh, your name is what? Oh, Maroney. How you doing, Maroney. Mike? I'm doing great. I thought you said Baroney, and I was trying to think, what is it, Baroney? Uh, Mike okay. Maroney. Something in my mouth. Sorry. All right. Uh, you got you to gotta protect uh, all your participants uh, from water balloon guys from uh, Colorado. <laughs> think you can do her, Mike? I can do that. I know you can. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have sentinels every 10 feet. And if anybody from Colorado with a beard and water balloon shows up, well, he'll be uh, handled. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, I will uh, forward that on to uh, Congressman King's office. Uh, what uh, you, you just want to uh, invite him to the parade or you want him to be in the parade or what do you want? I'd like him to be in the parade and uh, if possible, sit on the reviewing stand and watch everybody else. That'll be terrific. That would be absolutely terrific. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely pass that information on, Mike. Great. Thank you, Mike. What, what is the date again? June 1st. That's the Frontier Days Parade. Mike Maroney, yes. I, yeah. I will also be in that parade, so put me down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and please consider sitting on the reviewing stand. Um, you, know, you get to go through the crowd at the beginning of the parade, but then the people like to see their entries being viewed by our, our important people. All right. So I don't get to be on the reviewing stand then, huh? I got to go over and stand I you over. you were the speaker. Oh, you were going to announce. No, I, I will. So, well, I haven't been asked to do that as of yet, but. Uh, would you like to announce, Mike? I would like to announce, yes. I'll count you in. Well, thank you very much. I don't want to be stuck over there by the dirty movie theater, all right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll put up a. Uh, I've got a false front over that. Thank you. Well, I don't care. They, 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 I'm not asking you to do that. I just, just just don't stick me over there and say, oh, there's Divine over there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Front this is AM4. Well, that's a nice offer. Yeah, that's a nice offer. AM1400, KVFD, uh, the voice for that. It's Mike Maroney. He and his wife, uh, Cindy, of course, are builders, have been for a long time. They, they do mm -hmm. a great job. Anyway, uh, after what I've said about Dwight Dial, and you can hear uh, what he had to say, Ann, or anybody can on my sound on my Facebook page, which is AM fourteen hundred KVFD, the Voice Four Dimes. That was yesterday at four o'clock, and the man's name is Dwight Dial. And the reason I the reason I got in touch with Mr. Dial in the first place is because uh, Grant Cranbrink, I suppose he regrets this now, invited me to go along to uh, Corn Growers uh, event in Lake City last Friday night, and I was happy to attend. I like Tim Cranbrink; he's a good guy. Uh, and the scrapster was there, of course, but Mr. Dial was in the audience with others, and he told essentially the story to uh, Representative Sexton and Senator Kreinbrink. Now, Senator Kreinbrink, uh, Dwight told me yesterday, has voted for the mid-am position, what I call the mid-am position. Um, and you uh, have you already voted for that position, or no? It's not. It's not. Um... It's gone through committee, but it's not hit the House floor All yet. All right. Okay. So you and Scrappy, neither one of them uh, had a chance to vote on this. Correct. Because we are equals and colleagues. I, I, I know. <laughs> Have you told Mike that? <laughs> well, and he will always remind me that, um, well. He's the I, assistant I'm majority, majority leader. leader. <laughs> I'm actually the man here. You know what I mean? And, you know. Okay. So uh, uh, does anything, and I don't expect you to make your decision right here on the air, uh, Ann, mm -hmm. but. Uh, well, uh, is that something that you knew before you came in here? The information I gave you from Dwight Dial? I didn't know the information from him, no. Okay. I did not. Um, mid -Am is not telling the whole story here. I mean, and they have those nice glossy commercials on there where they're acting as if uh, there's freeloaders out there who are uh, who are uh, using energy that, it, that and everybody's paying for it because of these freeloaders. It's nonsense. Um. Everyone does, but I will tell you, everyone does use the grid. Yeah. 
and it it does need to ma be maintained. I mean, ever since certainly um, we've been talking about or every people in the know have been talking about it. I was probably um, giving injections and listening to the lungs back then, <laughs> but um, everyone everyone has been talking about that since uh, the early two thousands about how we need to upgrade our grid. Um, so I, I will tell you what it doesn't do. It, like I said, all the people who ha have existing solar um, uh, panels, they will be grandfathered in. So and no new charges will, will be on their bills. Um, it, it, it does not create a new tax on solar energy. Uh, it doesn't charge a fee to in install solar panels. It does not end what they call net metering. It does not change or eliminate any sort of solar or, or renewable energy incentives. What it does, though, is it extends those in incentives. So instead of eight years where your cost will be recouped, it, it's going to be 14 years. But it's still going, you're still getting those incentives for sol using solar energy, mm -hmm. okay? Um, I don't think that was necessarily mid -Am's idea, these incentives from solar energy. I think that was more... Uh, pressure from the federal government and state government, but mid -Am, uh you know, they they did that. Well, solar energy is is good. It's good, clean energy. Yes, it is. It uh, it gives Iowa a lot of jobs. Yes, it does. Um, and it's not going to uh, decrease the growth of solar energy. S similar uh, decreases or lengthening of the tax incentives have been done for wind energy. And everyone said, oh, well, you're going to end the wind, en wind energy pro program because people just aren't going to do it if they don't have tax incentives. But it hasn't. Jobs, it, the wind energy field has grown and they've added many new jobs since that those restrictions went into place. So the... There's there's some misinformation, I, I believe, and everything, and I, I am really trying to get all the information on this because I want to make a good decision. Um, and again, you know me, I like to hear from the constituents. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, I do, because <laughs> it's, it's not about me. It's about what everyone I'm representing wants. And uh, I'd have to say 95% of my communication has come in support of this new legislation. So again, even before I came in here today, I, I'm inclined to support it. Unless something that is being hidden from us that I don't know about, that changes my mind. And I say, oh, wow, this really isn't a good deal. Everything, everything I've learned so far, I think it's a good deal. Okay. Okay. All right. I will tell you one other thing that went through the, uh, so this did not go the, the, through the house yet. Um, one thing that did go through the house yesterday, which I'm, I'm very proud of. I'm really proud of my colleague, uh, colleagues that worked on it as well. Um, uh, we passed the f uh, framework for the children's mental health program in Iowa. So what that's going to do, it's, it, it does a lot of things, but um, it, it will establish a hotline that will be like a, a clear, it will tell parents, it will tell kids, it will tell if you're having an issue, you're having a crisis, it's going to, you're going to get to the help that you need to right away. Now we do have good, we have some good mental health um, programs, uh, providers in Iowa, but this is going to make it easier for parents to access that. Um, and we also passed unanimous, and that did not pass quite unanimously. And it, it, it was a little disturbing to me. I think 12 or 14 members voted against it in the, out of the, um, hundred people in the house, but, just be, what is the enemy of good? What the uh, perfect is uh, the exactly. Enemy of good. It's not a complete. It's <clears throat> not a complete and total uh, system. This is the framework to get this all going, and it is a good, good system. I, 
people have been working on this in the interim, you know, but between sessions, there were study groups, everyone was at the table, providers, parents, um, legislators, the uh, mental health coalitions in Iowa. They came up with a, a lot of good recommendations mm -hmm. and this is the product of it. And it is a good bill. And I'm surprised that that we actually had any pushback from that whatsoever. By the way, Representative Meyer will be at Eggs and Issues tomorrow at Iowa Central Community College at 8.30. Now, uh, concerning the two weenie, uh, I mean, uh, concerning uh, concerning uh, Representative Sexton and uh, Senator Kreinrich, do you suppose they'll be there too? Or Yes, I'm... Because I, I, I know Tim has starving children at home and he has to work constantly. And Scrapster does too. Oh, that's right. They're grandfathers. <laughs> I I do believe that they they're both committed to. They've uh, committed, have they? They're they're committed to you know addressing the public and being out there. And so, you hate it when I give those guys crap, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I I feel like I I do um uh, you know they they both do a good job and I I want to you know represent for them they, you're representing <laughs> and representing well i am the representative <laughs> michael devine the doctor of truth does anyone have anything they'd like to confess that am 1400 kbfd you don't have bad luck the reason that bad things happen to you is because you're a dumbass. If you don't listen to him, you suck. He's sneaky, but he's right. Michael Devine at AM 1400 KVFD. What a crude radio show we have here. But you got to admit, it's a lot of fun. Yes. Ann Myers represent. And she will be back in a little bit to represent. That's right. It's uh, 3.30. The news is next. Spring is right around the corner, and DSOC, as well as the Key on Central, is in need of your gently used furniture. So when you're doing your spring cleaning, think of us. We can pick up items if needed, and all donations are tax deductible. Also, don't forget our 24th annual DSOC cake auction being held on April 13th at the Iowa Central East Campus. If you would like to support our cause by providing an auction item or a cake, please call 955-2273. Thank you for helping us continue to provide free and confidential services to our community. Your news, your town, your station. KBFD News when it breaks. Good afternoon. I'm Alex Benzigal with the KVFD Afternoon News. The Iowa State Patrol says a Ford Dodge woman was killed in a two vehicle accident Thursday afternoon. The accident happened on the Kenyon Road Bridge in Ford Dodge when a westbound 2006 Chevy Impala driven by 89 year old Marvin Holsey of Ford Dodge crossed the raised median and struck an eastbound 2003 Dodge Dakota pickup truck driven by David L. Stone of Harcourt. A passenger in the Holsey car, 85 year old Ruth Smith of Ford Dodge, was pronounced dead at the accident scene. Holsey was airlifted to a Des Moines hospital for treatment of his injuries. Stone was transported to Uni Point Trinity Regional Medical Center in Fort Dodge for treatment and was reported in stable condition. The Democratic governor of Louisiana and a Republican congressional leader are criticizing Iowa Congressman Steve King for King's remarks about hurricane victims in their state. King was in Charter Oak for a town hall meeting and compared victims of Hurricane Katrina in 2005 to Iowans dealing with floodwaters now. We're Iowans, and I'm always proud of our reaction to this. I've worked with the FEMA people for a long time, but here's what FEMA tells me. We go to a place like New Orleans, and everybody's looking around saying, who's going to help me, who's going to help me? And they're just always gratified when they come and see how Iowans take care of each other. And so that's a that's a point of pride that spreads across the country. Congressman Steve Scalise, the second ranking Republican in the House, represents the New Orleans suburbs. Scalise calls King's remarks absurd and offensive and a complete contradiction to how the people of New Orleans responded to the devastation of Hurricane Katrina. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards, a Democrat, tweeted that King's comments were disgusting and disappointing. King tweeted yesterday that he's working to restore free speech to the halls of Congress. During his remarks in Charter Oak yesterday, King said in 2005 he made four visits to New Orleans to tour the devastation. First member of Congress to go in down there. Um, you broke some rules to go there. I'll just confess to that. And uh, <clears throat> flew into the airport and just keep the mic and ask permission to land. They gave it to us, so we went in. And uh, I saw that from the air and from the ground and went back and did what we could to help those folks down there. King toured flood damage in Missouri Valley and Hornick yesterday, promising to work closely with local leaders to help Iowans recover from the disaster. 
King said, as the only Republican in Iowa's congressional delegation, he won't hesitate to use his influence with President Trump to help Iowans gain access to federal flood relief. A Northwest Iowa school principal has resigned, but it's unclear why, as Radio Iowa's Joel Herman reports. The Stormlake Community School District has accepted the resignation of Bo Rouleau as principal of the high school. District Superintendent Dr. Stacy Cole says the resignation is effective immediately following an investigation that revealed a violation of district policies. Cole says they want to assure families and community members that at no time was student safety compromised. The district will soon begin the process of finding the next high school principal. In the meantime, Cole will serve as acting principal. Joel Herman, Radio Iowa, Storm Lake. I'm Alex Benzgal with the KVFD Afternoon News. Have a great day. Here's a look at how the markets close today. May corn up to at 378 and a quarter. July up two cents at 387 and a half. September up one and a half at 393 and a quarter. And December up one and a quarter at four dollars even. May soybeans closed down six and three quarters at 903 and three quarters. July down seven at 917 and a quarter. August beans down seven at 923 and a quarter. And November down seven and a quarter at 937 and a half. May wheat closed down a half a penny at 466. Soybean meals down 30 cents a ton at 315. April live cattle down 17 at 129.72. June down 40 at 123.50. March feeder cattle up 22 at 143. April down 12 at 148.80. April lean hogs unchanged to 78.32 and May up 42 cents at 87.02. From the Alpha Media Farm Desk, I'm Dwayne Murley. Here's the AM1400 KVFD weatherology forecast. Bright sunshine expected this afternoon with a high of 52. Northeasterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Lows level off around 29 tonight. Daytime highs approaching 55 tomorrow. Chance for scattered showers. High of 51 Sunday with a chance for scattered rain showers. D1 Monday. From the Weatherology Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Jennifer Wojcicki. Currently, it's 51. Eating meals with a parent, especially breakfast, can help kids have a better body image. I'm Julie Harker with Healthy Living on Brownfield. Jenny Winter, director of the University of Missouri Center for Body Image Research, says children and adolescents are under a lot of pressure from social media and pop culture about their physical appearance. And we know that kids as young as three know that fat is bad and thin is good. So they understand this at a very early age, and we see body dissatisfaction generally it peaks in adolescence. Winter says their study analyzed information from more than 12,000 kids in more than 300 schools in all 50 states. We were really interested in looking at how certain eating behaviors relate to body image. So those eating behaviors include eating breakfast more frequently and having family meals. And what we found was that the more frequent these teens were eating breakfast, the better their body image, but also the more frequent frequent family meals they were having, whether that was breakfast or dinner, was also related to more positive body image. Winter says the study has important implications for parents. As our children age and go into the adolescent years, lives become a lot busier. They're more active, involved in a lot more activities after school. Maybe they're driving, maybe they're working. And so prioritizing family meals is very challenging. But I think this gives us one more reason to say, hey, we really should try to prioritize this as much as we can. Eating disorders and other negative behaviors behaviors can come from poor body image. I'm Julie Harker with Healthy Living on Brownfield. Many medicines used to treat colds and flu contain acetaminophen, a pain reliever and fever reducer found in hundreds of over-the-counter and prescription medicines. But taking too much or more than one medication containing acetaminophen per day can damage your liver. So always read the label and don't take acetaminophen if you drink three or more alcoholic drinks every day. To learn more, visit fda.gov slash OTC pain info. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Food and Drug Administration. Did you know that the CDC recommends up to six vaccines, even for healthy adults? Or that vaccines are part of a healthy lifestyle, just like eating well and exercising? Or that choosing not to get vaccinated may put your health at risk? There's a lot to know when it comes to vaccines. Get the facts by visiting vaccinesinyou.com and talk to your doctor about which vaccines may be right for you. When it comes to your health, it pays to get the facts. Visit vaccinesandyou.com for more information. A public service of healthy women in birth. Lawfersweiler Funeral Home is pleased to announce the addition of our crematory. 
I'm Luke Lauferswiler. The addition of our on-site crematory is another example of how we consistently exceed expectations and deliver a standard of service that is 100% guaranteed. At Lauferswilers, we're honored to give your family our assistance and expertise, taking care of even the smallest details before, during, and after the funeral, so you can begin the healing process. We're Lauferswiler Funeral Home, or Dodge, a trusted friend of the family for over 160 years. Hey guys, Ken here from the Hit Podcast. Today's growth. Who would win a three-mile bicycle race, an 11-year-old girl or last year's winner of the Tour de France? It all depends on the bicycle. It depends on their vehicle. Both on a 10-speed and the pro racer is going to win every time. But put the racer on a tricycle and the 11-year-old wins every time. You see, it's not the driver. It's the vehicle. When it comes to generating revenue, it's exactly the same. If you have a job or a small business, you are riding a tricycle. You can only go so fast. If you need to make up lost ground, it's not going to happen on a tricycle. No matter how fast you pedal, it's simply not going to win the race. Why do many people with no schooling and no advanced degree often become very wealthy? Simple. They choose to only ride 10 speeds. When it comes to helping people create their next revenue model, both Forbes and Inc. recommend Income Store as a can't miss when it comes to putting people on a 10 speed. Could your household or business use an additional revenue model that doesn't solely depend on you? If so, you need to check out IncomeStore.com. That's IncomeStore.com. This is Chris Heslop with Star Energy FS. If your business doesn't stop for cold weather, neither should your equipment. The professionals at Star Energy FS know that performance counts. SureFlow keeps your fuel flowing by preventing ice and wax molecules from plugging filters and fuel lines. Minimize your downtime and protect your engines all winter long. FS SureFlow delivers strong cold temperature performance, improved fuel efficiency, and optimum lubricity. Contact your FS specialist today about SureFlow, diesel fuel cold flow improver. Connect to this radio station from all across the country. Take us to the gym, shopping. How about a road trip? Listen to us now on the free iHeartRadio app. You'll never miss a moment with your favorite radio station. Download the free iHeartRadio app and search for this station so we can go wherever you want us to. If you're a gearhead or not, You'll enjoy the Under the Hood Car Show every Saturday afternoon from 2 till 4 on the voice of Fort Dodge, AM 1400, KVFD, Fort Dodge. Michael Devine at AM 1400, KVFD. Listen to this. Making radio great again. The other number one seeds are UNC, UVA, and Gonzaga. And I have a theory. I know this might be controversial, but here it is. I don't believe Gonzaga exists. I <laughs> I've never heard the word Gonzaga outside of college basketball. I don't know where it is. I don't know anyone who went there. I don't even know anyone who knows anyone who went there. Go on YouTube and search Gonzaga. All you will get are basketball videos. Nothing else. Michael Devine, the doctor of truth. Does anyone have anything they'd like to confess? That AM 1400 KBFT. There you go, AM 1400, KBFT, the voice of Fort Dodge. I'm Michael Devine. Yes, we're going to tell the truth, make it matter. We're never going to be boring, live, local, and relevant talk radio. From the corner of 2nd Avenue North and 10th Street right here in Fort Dodge. Yes, the uh, unpleasant news is that Congressman Steve King was in our town. He was having lunch at Mineral City and really was attacked by some man from Colorado uh, who was in the presence of his mother. Personally, I'm uh, 67 years old, and my mother would have backhanded me if I'd have done anything like this. But <laughs> mom has a, has a great backhand. But uh, uh, some uh, some man from Colorado threw a full glass of water on Congressman Steve King. That's a U.S. congressman. I hope there's I hope there's consequences. Uh, congressman King is a federal official. It should not be um, it should not be accepted by anyone that a United States federal official should be attacked in such a manner. I mean, uh, I, I will say it's not as bad as what happened, of course, to Representative Steve Calise. Calise but my God, is that is that what we're doing? Making those sorts of measurements now? I mean, our Congress people. No matter what you think, our, our representatives, even Ann Meyer here, uh, they should be. Uh, they should. There, there should be no doubt in anyone's mind that no one touches them. Period. End of story. Uh, I'm going to get on a rant about the decline of Western civilization here, Ann. So uh, please stop me. Stop me from myself. Stop me. <laughs> Representative Ann Meyer is here. If you have a question for Representative Ann Meyer, it's 515-955-1400. Uh, certainly feel free to ask a Representative Meyer a question or. You can uh, go to Eggs and Issues tomorrow at 8.30, uh, and Representative Meyer will be there. And maybe Scrapster will be, uh, well, not sick, and uh, Representative or Senator Kreinbrink will take the day off. I know he's got to make millions of dollars. He's got all kinds of kids at home, but uh, they couldn't be here today. So I'm looking forward to Eggs and Issues tomorrow. Imagine me having to go out to our central and them questions. But what a world we live in, Ann. 
What a world. All right. I think you're right, though. I think that uh, I I heard that just the act of throwing that water on him is actually federal federal offense. Oh, God, Leavenworth. Wouldn't mom like, love that? Yeah. <laughs> Probably not going to happen, but maybe a few days in jail anyway. Then. Yeah. There's my boy in the can. I'm so proud. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not right. It's not right to do that to anybody. It isn't. It's repulsive it, and... Uh, no and, you know, we put ourselves out there. Um, we certainly take a lot of verbal abuse, a lot of email abuse, a lot of text abuse, but you, you shouldn't have to text have, abuse. You know, well, everyone has your cell phone number. It's yeah, I public. Suppose, yeah. So you, we should, I think a public official should at least have the expectation of safe, uh, you know, cordial behavior and not physical behavior. I think, well, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about this, but it's just by God outrage. It is mm -hmm. for this for something like this to happen in our town. Okay. It's just a by God outrage. I'm thankful though it wasn't someone from Fort Dodge. Yeah, I, I, well, I'm thankful for that. But you know, we we've done a lot. Of, Iowa. We have done a lot of work. You know, Fort Dodge had kind of a little outlaw reputation for a long, long time. You know, and then after uh, the packing plants closed in the early 1980s, mid 1980s, we fell into decline. We had a reputation, kind of dirty Dodge, kind of a rundown little town full of poor people and those sort of things. We're making this big comeback. I think it's taken a long time. And then once again, here's dirty Dodge where people throw water on a U.S. congressman. You know, for Fort Dodge, something unpleasant happening. You know, like we need this. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. visitors from Colorado who uh, just swoop in on our town and do things like this to us. And I do hope that and I'm sure this will be on the news, and I do hope it, it is mentioned that that fella is not from Iowa. I know his name, but I'm not <laughs> going to say his name. I, I know who it is. I mean, I know his name. I've never seen him, don't know him, don't care to know him, don't sure. ever care to even see him. But uh, I invite him to leave and never come back. I hope I hope that's the case. I'm, I'm, again, spending too much time on this. So let's, and we really haven't talked about your specialty, uh, health care, yep. and what has happened uh, in Des Moines regarding healthcare after funnel week. So can you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that? Yep, I sure can. We we have a lot of we had a lot of bills that go through that went through. Um one bill I managed managed last Thursday. I think I think I talked about it um or I managed last week was the opioid uh um if a patient presents to a clinic uh or an em emergency room requiring uh, treatment for a substance abuse disorder. You know, a lot of people ha are addicted to opioids. Oh, yeah. Um, and, op you know, prescription opioids, and then that leads to heroin when they can't get that anymore. Um, let's say that that person goes into their clinic and wants to be clean. Um, what we did was uh, made several medications uh, available for treatment that did not require a pre-authorization. Mm -hmm. So if you, again, if you go into a doctor's office, a, a clinic, a clinic, a, a emergency room, you want to get clean. You've made, you've turned the corner. You want to make that happen. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if you can't get a medication or a treatment authorized for 72 hours, what's going to happen? That person's uh, just because they're of their addiction, they're going to probably leave and go out and use again if they can't get any, any treatment. So this made it where we have several medications now that are available to a, a, a treat that, that they cannot, um, that are available without the pre-authorization. So I'm pretty proud of that. You know, I heard a lot of uh, mental health issues, a lot of substance abuse issues at the door, and this is one way uh, that we can address that in Iowa. Governor Reynolds has made mental health treatment, availability of mental health treatment, one of her things. Yep. And I think that's a very important thing, especially in rural Iowa. Uh, more and more, we're clustered, in, even in Iowa, we're clustered in certain areas. And uh, for people, especially in northwest Iowa or north central Iowa, where your district is, of course, mm -hmm. uh, health care, emergency health care for loved ones can be a real problem just to excess, period. Is there anything that's happening in Des Moines that will help us with that? Yes, um, there are a few things. Uh, the mental health framework that went into legislation last year, um, that broke the uh, state up into regions, again, where where people can go and um, access, uh, uh, get their, uh, get on the right track to find the services. So it's 
a place where all services are going to be able to um, be referred. Now this year with the mental health, the children's mental health program, same thing. Uh, we're Again, I think we just talked about this last half hour. There's going to be a hotline. If anyone needs assistance, um, especially crisis assistance, they're going to have uh, a direction where to take their child, what ser what services are available, um, and, and where they can access them. Now, uh, what's our big problem in rural Iowa with, with health care? Uh, we don't have enough providers. Let's talk about that for a minute because you're a nurse. Your husband is a physician. Your son hopes to be. Mm -hmm. uh, he will and, be. And, well, <laughs> well I, 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 I don't. I should have. Let me rephrase that. He is not yet a physician, but he is he's a physician that's going to happen here. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, we're good with that, Mom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, right. uh, but it, there, people go to medical school at our major universities, Drake, University of Iowa, and they leave. Mm hmm. Aren't, isn't there some way we can get our physicians who grew up in Iowa and may even want to stay here, like your son? Mm -hmm. Isn't there a way we can uh, offer some sort of incentive to make that happen? Um, in fact, our Human Resources Committee did pass legislation last week on the floor to offer medical residencies, uh, offer them Iowa residents, Iowa people who live in Iowa. I say residencies and residents, and it gets confusing because you know doctors are residents. But anyhow, um, we want to make sure that the people who start out in Iowa, let's give them first priority to get these residencies. Because how are we going to keep doctors in Iowa? We're um, their families are there. They're going to start out. They're going to start. If they start out, they grow up in Iowa, they go to school in Iowa, do you think they're going to leave the state to practice? Maybe a few of them, but for the most part, Iowa's a great place and they want to stay here. Let's not keep pulling the people uh, from the East Coast just to get in because they went to Harvard under, undergrad or they went to a prestigious school undergrad. You know, we have excellent uh, four-year public school or four-year public universities in Iowa there's no reason these kids, these students shouldn't be able to get mm -hmm. into med school. Um, and so that's one thing we did. We said that um, medical residency should be available first to uh, kids that grow up here. I would hope so. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there's all sorts of minority preferences. I mean, the University of Iowa is notorious for minority preference. It's almost like white kids can't go to school there. Uh, really, I've, <laughs> I've heard for the professional programs at the University of Iowa, there are there are spots that are reserved, a number of spots for uh, out even. Uh, uh, Iowa is a state that is overwhelmingly like Caucasian, like it or not. But we still apparently have to have certain quotas for minority students. And those quotas, I assume, would be filled by people from out of our state. Now, I understand that the affirmative action is an effort to atone for racism and slavery. And I usually support affirmative action. But let's keep. Let's not lose our minds. Let's not start acting foolish. Isn't there something that uh, we can do uh, to again help our students here in Iowa, our top students? Uh, we have plenty of minor uh, minority students in Iowa that I'm sure we do that could take those spots as I'm well. I'm sure they could. I'm not saying let's let's get rid of uh, minorities or women or Who's saying anything. That? I'm not Who is saying. That? Um, I'm saying we should give preference to our students who, who grew up in Iowa and would like to stay here. Bingo, regardless of their race or sex. <laughs> I have no problem with their race or sex. Okay. I could care less. But I, I, I feel, too, if they grew up here, let's keep them here. That's right. Uh, let, let's make no mistake about it, ladies and gentlemen. I'll tell you, uh, female doctors, uh, male doctors, I don't care. I, I go to a doctor who can help me. Uh, you know, uh, come on. It's just not that important. Or, sure. Uh, or... Uh, a doctor from uh, some minority group or uh, hey, what do I care about that? Mm -hmm. Can you help me doc? Yes, I can. That's what I want to know. <laughs> That's all I want. <laughs> although I did, although I did see a white guy this morning. Really? And he was a white guy. Um, did he help you out? He did. As a matter of fact, all right. Yeah. All right. He, he, I think, I think he's one of the best. I around. think he is too. By <laughs> God, he's not bad at all. Is he? <laughs> I, I suppose I will criticize him for going to see that uh, doctor, but, 
you know, people criticize for sports, so we shouldn't really, you know, I'm, frankly, I do it for sports sometimes. I know it shocks everybody out there, but anyway, uh, Ann Myers, our guest, AM 1400, KVFT, the voice of Fort Dodge. If you have a question or comment for Representative Meyer, now is the time, 515-955-1400. Anything on your list over there, Ann, or are we getting close to the end here? Uh, we're getting close to the end. I, I'll go over a few bills that went through this week that um, are really focused on families and children. <clears throat> so the Family First Act went through. What that is, is a, if a uh, child has to be pulled from the home, you know, it's devastating if a child has to be pulled from mm -hmm. the home for any reason. But Family First is now we're going to try and place those kids, um, not just with foster families first, but with um, family members or other uh, members other people that that child has a relationship, like friends, uh, um, parents of friends, uh, neighbors, you know, anyone who can keep a, anyone who can keep a, a sense of stability to that child mm -hmm. where they're not just going into a situation uh, where they don't know the person. Sure. So that's, so that's one of the things that went through and it's going to help preserve family relationships and, uh, uh, limit the use of group care setting to children that need mental treatment. Sure. I, I, I do want to ask, uh, yep. because I've seen this happen. Someone is in need of emergency health care. Yes. What do we do with, uh, uh, there's a, I mean, there's no emergency care here in Fort Dodge, mental health care. Um, um they'll, they'll, Anyone who's in need of emergency medical uh, mental health care in Fort Dodge presents to the emergency room. Presents, and then what? And then we'll either, we hold them until they have a bed. Um, Tell who has a bed. Uh, and that's the thing. We need more at, we need more mm. acute beds in Fort Dodge. Because I've, without I've heard that. a doubt. I've heard people, and I've been part of this, uh, taking uh, people who are in crisis to the emergency room, and uh, we'll call Des Moines. No. And no, I and I've heard there. that too. And Des Moines is not actually in our mental health region. Our our mental health region is Waterloo. And fine. They, and, and and they do um, for the most part, they can get into Waterloo. We're expanding again, we're we want to expand beds. Um but you know, yeah, they can get a bed in Waterloo. Yeah, they if they can get a bed anywhere, that's great. But if you think about a parent who might be uh uh, or a family member that has to drive an hour and a half and possibly be with their loved one. That's, that's not the greatest uh, system. We need beds closer. Yes, we do. So yeah. that's uh, the regions are expanding adult uh, mental health care. Again, we're still working on that uh, adult framework and then instituting the children's framework as well. It is not an easy fix and we are all working hard to uh, make that happen. Now, a little while ago, you mentioned the opioid crisis, which we've been told there's an opioid crisis in this country for quite some time. Is that something uh, that we have here in Iowa, an opioid crisis? Most of the reports I've seen of heavy opioid use in deaths are happening in states where I, there doesn't seem to be any regulation. West Virginia uh, comes to mind. Uh, uh, there's, there's those poor hillbillies out there ODing like crazy. Uh, they, they, uh, they have, uh, doctors that write these huge scripts and the, uh, people take them and, uh, I don't, well, and you they are die. Right. You are right. Um, Iowa is not the most affected by the, right. uh, it's not as bad here as in, in Iowa as it is in other States, mm -hmm. but we're still addressing it. I mean, we're still addressing, well, that's good. Um, uh, we've got records on, uh, if you have any, um, any prescriptions out there, we know who's prescribed it to you. You can't go to the net. You can't get a prescription here in, in, uh, in Fort Dodge, go over to Webster city, see another doctor, go down to Boone and get, see another doctor. That's not we allowed, have a is state, it? we have a statewide, uh, um, registry of some kind registry and, and we'll, we know how much you're, you're getting and okay. we want to prevent overdoses. That's the main thing. We want to prevent <laughs> opioid deaths and then hopefully get some treatment for these people. I have a question for you, of course. Why are you here? Michigan is playing down in Des Moines. 
Yeah. Do you know anybody who's from Michigan, went to school in Michigan and uh, might be interested in the game? Yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> and yeah, he does want to get down there tomorrow, but uh, I don't know if it's going to work out. But I just feel like he's got to get down there. I mean, when else, when is it going to happen again that his team is playing that an would hour be, and a half from us? That would be never if he stays in Iowa. That would be <laughs> never. So now is the time. I still regret not going to Chicago for uh, the 2016 World Series. It was just a big mess around Wrigley Field, I know, and the prices they were charging for were just outrageous. But I may never see the Cubs in the World Series again. I've been a Cub fan my whole life. And you know what? I, I might have to make a big sacrifice and say, you know what? I will sit with you during those games. And, and to tell you the truth, basketball is one of the only sports I understand. <laughs> <laughs> So it really wouldn't be a, too much of a sacrifice. <laughs> uh, all, all sports are really the same. Follow the ball or the puck wherever it goes. There's usually a score. And I'd much rather sit in the well in Wells Fargo to watch a concert. But <laughs> well, you know, uh, it's you know, there's just some things but you we, do. And, and yeah, we, you know, my husband does so so much for me. I, I'm willing to, to uh, take one for the team here. Representative Ann Meyer will be at Eggs and Issues tomorrow on the Iowa Central Campus. Thank you, Ann. 8.30 a.m. Well, it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon. This is AM 1400 KVFD, the voice of Ford Dodd. Billions of dollars in damage on the Sabrade Fox News. The estimates beginning to rise rapidly as flooding continues in parts of the Midwest. This Missouri evacuee says living near the Missouri River may not be possible anymore. Unsure if there's a normal. You know, this is eight years from the last one. And it was supposed to be a hundred year. Thousands remain evacuated, miles of homes and farmland underwater. We've got an early damage estimate from uh, Nebraska uh, suggesting the damage there is $1.5 billion in Nebraska alone. Iowa's governor requesting emergency federal relief put the damage in her state at $1.6 billion. A substantial portion of that is lost to livestock and crops. Fox's Mike Tobin in McChesney Park, Illinois, where floodwaters are beginning to recede. In Iowa alone, the governor's disaster request to the president it lists 25,000 structures damaged, 70 miles of levees failing. Renewed fear of a global economic slowdown blamed for a sell-off on Wall Street. The Dow dropped 460 points. The S&P also down over 1%. The Nasdaq falling 2%. Boeing shares slotting again after an Indonesian airline said it wants to cancel its order for more of the jets currently grounded because of two recent crashes. The airline, Indonesian airline, saying that customers have lost confidence in the 737 MAX. Regulators, of course, idled 370 uh, of these planes. Since the Ethiopian crash, Boeing has lost $28 billion in market cap. But not to worry, right now, Boeing has orders for nearly 5,000 737 MAX planes, enough to keep production lines open for years. Fox Business Network's Jerry Willis. For now, the crashes remain under investigation. The jury now has the case against a former police officer on trial in Pittsburgh for the shooting death of an unarmed teenager last year. The defense says the officer thought someone had a gun. Prosecutors say he made conflicting statements. And the deadly force was not necessary. This is Fox News. Texting and rules for recurring automated marketing text messages. Message to data rates may apply. Texting privacy rules in terms of conditions at textrules.us. Has dinner got you down? Sick of awful frozen meals or unhealthy fast food? Don't despair because Martha Stewart is doing a free taste test, giving away three full-sized meals from her new meal kit delivery service, Martha and Marley Spoon. All fresh ingredients with Martha's delicious and easy recipes. You're eating in just 30 minutes. To be part of Martha's at-home taste test and get three free meals, be one of the first hundred people to text the word food to 246810. It's so easy. Text us now. Martha and Marley spoon meals are easy, simple, and delicious. And right now, Martha wants you to enjoy three of her best 30-minute meals for free so you can save time and enjoy eating dinner again. To be part of Martha's at-home taste test and get your three free meals, be one of the first hundred people to text food to 246810. That's food to 246810. Food to 246810. This is a Fox News alert. The Mueller report has been delivered to the U.S. Attorney General William Barr. 
No one knows what's in it yet, and it is not known how much, if any, the attorney general will decide to make public. The president has made clear that that will be the attorney general's decision. But again, just getting word that the report from the special counsel on the Russia probe, Robert Mueller, has now been delivered to the attorney general. The White House earlier today declaring the ISIS caliphate eliminated in Syria, though Syrian defense forces report lingering fighting with some holdouts after the final territory was recaptured. There's been no final decision yet on how many troops will remain. A show of solidarity in New Zealand as thousands of non-Muslims turn out for Friday prayers. Fox's Jonathan Hunt. The Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern leading the way, wearing a headscarf to honor Muslim tradition and offering fulsome support to the Muslim community. New Zealand mourns with you. We are one. This a week after the deadly attack at two mosques that left 50 dead. A bracket-busting result in college basketball's March Madness. A 13-seed stunner in the south region of the bracket. Gives it up for Leonard. Cross court to the left. Ends up in the corner. Has it a three. Yes, he knocks it down. Audio courtesy of the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network, Max Hazard drains the three there, part of a game-high 19 points for him as the Anteaters of the University of California, Irvine, a 13 seed in the tournament, stunned fourth seed Kansas State 70-64 to to advance to the second round. This win for UC Irvine comes in only their second appearance in the Division I NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament in program history. And it's their first win. Fox's Matt Napolitano. Again, the Mueller report delivered to the U.S. Attorney General, Lisa Brady. This is Fox News. Your news, your town, your station. KVFD News when it breaks. Good afternoon. I'm Alex Benzigal with the KVFD Afternoon News. The Iowa State Patrol says a Ford Dodge woman was killed in a two-vehicle accident Thursday afternoon. The accident happened on the Kenyon Road Bridge in Ford Dodge when a westbound 2006 Chevy Impala driven by 89-year-old Marvin Holsey of Ford Dodge crossed the raised median and struck an eastbound 2003 Dodge Dakota pickup truck driven by David L. Stone of Harcourt. A passenger in the Holsey car, 85-year-old Ruth Smith of Ford Dodge, was pronounced dead at the accident scene. Holsey was airlifted to a Des Moines hospital for treatment of his injuries. Stone was transported to Uni Point Trinity Regional Medical Center in Ford Dodge for treatment and was reported in stable condition. The Democratic governor of Louisiana and a Republican congressional leader are criticizing Iowa Congressman Steve King for King's remarks about hurricane victims in their state. King was in Charter Oak for a town hall meeting and compared victims of Hurricane Katrina in 2005 to Iowans dealing with floodwaters now. We're Iowans, and I'm always proud of our reaction to this. I've worked with the FEMA people for a long time, but here's what FEMA tells me. We go to a place like New Orleans, and everybody's looking around saying, who's going to help me, who's going to help me? And they're just always gratified when they come and see how Iowans take care of each other. And so that's a that's a point of pride that spreads across the country. Congressman Steve Scalise, the second ranking Republican in the House, represents the New Orleans suburbs. Scalise calls King's remarks absurd and offensive and a complete contradiction to how the people of New Orleans responded to the devastation of Hurricane Katrina. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards, a Democrat, tweeted that King's comments were disgusting and disappointing. King tweeted yesterday that he's working to restore free speech to the halls of Congress. During his remarks in Charter Oak yesterday, King said in 2005 he made four visits to New Orleans to tour the devastation. First member of Congress to go in down there. Um, broke some rules to go there. I'll just confess to that. And uh, <clears throat> flew into the airport and just keep the mic and ask permission to land. They gave it to us, so we went in. And uh, I saw that from the air and from the ground and went back and did what we could to help those folks down there. King toured flood damage in Missouri Valley and Hornick yesterday, promising to work closely with local leaders to help Iowans recover from the disaster. King said as the only Republican in Iowa's congressional delegation, he won't hesitate to use his influence with President Trump to help Iowans gain access to federal flood relief. A Northwest Iowa school principal has resigned, but it's unclear why, as Radio Iowa's Joel Herman reports. The Storm Lake Community School District has accepted the resignation of Bo Rouleau as principal of the high school. District Superintendent Dr. Stacy Cole says the resignation is effective immediately following an investigation that revealed a violation of district policies. Cole says they want to assure families and community members that at no time was student safety compromised. The district will soon begin the process of finding the next high school principal. In the meantime, Cole will serve as acting principal. Joel Herman, Radio Iowa, Storm Lake. 
I'm Alex Benzgal with the KVFD Afternoon News. Have a great day. Here's the AM 1400 KVFD weatherology forecast. Bright sunshine expected this afternoon with a high of 52. Northeasterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Lows level off around 29 tonight. Daytime highs approaching 55 tomorrow. Chance for scattered showers. High of 51 Sunday with a chance for scattered rain showers. D1 Monday. From the Weatherology Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Jennifer Wojcicki. Currently, it's 51. Take the worry out of winter with a winter weather advisor on KVFD brought to you by Community Health Center Fort Dodge, offering dental, behavioral health, and general medical assistance for men, women, and children. They're committed to your well-being. Community Health Center, get to know them. And Creative Cakes, making life sweet with espresso, lunch, gourmet cupcakes, and other sweet treats. Creative Cakes in the Crossroads Mall, Fort Dodge. They make life sweet. Listen for the winter weather advisor on the voice of Fort Dodge, AM 1400 KVFD. I'm Jamie Brundage, owner of Historic Bruce Funeral Home. We're a full-service funeral home with an off-site crematory. At Bruce's, we specialize in pre-arrangements and family support before, during, and after the service. We also offer beautiful memorial items to help you remember your loved one forever. Bruce Funeral Home is proud to be by your side every step of the way throughout the funeral process. Historic Bruce Funeral Home, Fort Dodge. Connect to this radio station from all across the country. Take us to the gym, shopping. How about a road trip? Listen to us now on the free iHeartRadio app. You'll never miss a moment with your favorite radio station. Download the free iHeartRadio app and search for this station so we can go wherever you want us to. What if the kid who cut your grass worked like most financial advisors? Instead of a straight up 20 bucks, you'd get some confusing bill with surcharges and add-ons. What the heck is a blade height adjustment fee? Creative planning is different. Our fiduciary advisors work off one transparent fee structure, and we never receive commissions on your investments. Call 866-CREATIVE or visit creativeplanning.com to learn more. Investment strategies recommended by Creative Planning are not assured of earning a profit or avoiding a loss in declining markets. At Indeed, we believe a resume is a great way to see an overview of a candidate, but you're not hiring a resume, you're hiring a person. That's why we offer tools to give you a deeper sense of the people behind the paper, like skill tests, which let you actually see a candidate's abilities in action to make sure they're a good fit for the job. See beyond the resume with Indeed. Increase your visibility to great candidates with a free sponsored job upgrade on your first job posting at Indeed.com slash promo. The sponsored job upgrade is a $50 sponsored job credit. Users are charged once the credit is spent or it expires. Terms, conditions, and quality standards apply. From the Fox Business Network, Papa John's shares are rallying. The pizza chain has named Shaquille O'Neal to its board. The company says the NBA Hall of Famer will invest in nine restaurants in the Atlanta area and will enter into a marketing agreement to be an ambassador for the pizza brand. O'Neal currently owns a Krispy Kreme Donuts franchise in Atlanta and previously owned 27 Five Guys Burgers and Fries franchises. He's also founder and owner of the Big Chicken restaurant chain and has Shaquille's Restaurant in Los Angeles. Mortgage rates have moved lower and more people are buying houses. The National Association of Realtors says existing home sales rose 11.8% in February to the highest level since March a year ago. Home resales rose in all regions of the nation except the Northeast. With the Fox Business Report, I'm Ginny Cosola. Allergy sufferers, my name's Nigel. As a wise and educated owl, I know the difference between what's wise and unwise. Suffering needlessly with allergy symptoms, unwise. Getting a free 10-day sample of Zizol, quite wise. Zizol is the allergy medicine that's just as effective at hour 24 as at hour 1, which makes getting a free 10-day sample one of the wisest things you can do. So don't be unwise. Be wise all and visit Zizol.com for your free sample today. Use as directed. This is AM 1400 KBFD, the voice of Fort Dodge. Good afternoon. You're on the air. Yeah, Mike, this is Drew Sabin. Hi, Drew. How you doing? Okay, I got home just now. And in the mail is I have another mailing. And uh, it says, the good news, Iowa is a leader in clean, renewable energy. The bad news, people with solar don't pay to use power lines like the rest of us or keep the electric grid safe and running. It's not fair. And it's asking 
people to contact Ann Meyer and Tim Kreinbrink regarding this issue. I left you a note there just a few minutes ago. I don't know if, if the men gave you that note. But yeah, they did. As a matter of fact, Drew, what, uh, what is the name of this group that's uh, sending out this mailer? Okay, it says at the bottom, yeah. learn more, get the facts, and join our coalition at www.real, R-E-A-L, coalition, I-A, period, O-R-G. And they're, they're also running ads on TV. Oh, yeah, I and, know. So we don't know what this is about. So Well, I'll, I'll tell you, I haven't looked, but I'm going to bet you $20, Drew, that Real Coalition IA is a public relations firm working for Mid-American. I mean, it's a Mid-American creation, I will absolutely guarantee you. So what do you, uh, what do you think about this, uh, well, horse, uh, well, I, sh I, sh I can't say it on the radio, manure. <laughs> that uh, Real Coalition IA and uh, the uh, Mid-American people are putting out? Because this is just greed on Mid-American's part. I, I, don't, I don't understand this other than uh, that I know in the Western United States, uh, there's uh, when people are building new houses, they have to have, uh, you know, energy conservation as part of their construction and there's electric grids and solar on the roof and everything else. So I know that there's a lot of, of things tied in with construction and solar and the like. And, and so there's, there's, you know, beyond that, I don't know. Uh, but it's just maybe, maybe Ann knows more about what this is about and can, convey that to people listening. Well, Eggs and Issues is tomorrow, Drew. I assume you'll be there. Maybe we can convey that to our uh, our representatives. Okay. Thank you, Drew. Okay, Mike. All right, AM 1400 KVFD, the voice for Dodge. Yeah, Drew Steven, a lot of people know him. You know oh, him, don't yeah. you there, Gully? Absolutely, Dr. Drew. You Dr. Have. Drew. Was he a urologist? Yeah. yeah. I think he was, yeah. Very good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yes. about, he's about our age, isn't he? Uh, yeah, probably, or maybe, I don't know. I don't know. He, he retired early and, uh, he, I yeah, know. he did. And, uh, he worked with the Boy Scouts for a while, I think. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, yeah, that's, uh, uh, I, I think our Republican representatives, all three of them are going to uh, go with the mid American position, which is disappointing, but I understand mid America has got a lot of money to give people <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one way or the other, you know, but this re uh, real coalition, I, a, yeah. It's like Citizens for Health. Did I tell you? I probably I mentioned Citizens for Health several times in the year. Citizens for Health is a group in New York City, mm -hmm. and they're uh, public relations guys and lawyers who work for five families in Florida who are sugar growers, and their express intention is to first of all push back on ethanol or corn sweeteners, and to make sure that the federal government subsidizes the sugar crop in Florida. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason they exist, yep. and they're Citizens for Health. I would like to point out that there's nothing healthy about sugar at all. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's citizens for health. That's the the unfortunate thing about the internet is you can anybody can put together a website. They can, and you don't really know who you're dealing with. You no, know? and you know I know I've you've done this too. You go on a website and you're trying to find out, okay, who who is this? You know, they're putting out information and and. Uh, uh, boy, sometimes you can't even find out where they're located at, you know? No. And, uh, so it, it's, it's always a tricky deal and, and it's unfortunate because there's a lot of, you know, a lot of information being put up, put out there by groups and organizations with uh, an ulterior motive. And if you're on that website reading it, it sounds good. It sounds legit, but how do you know? You know, it's just, uh, yeah. how do you know? Boy, I tell you, uh, I, I you know, we got to find Mulholland tonight. UC Irvine Ant Eaters. I picked them. Uh, take down KU. K State. K State. K State. Oh, he took down K State. Yeah, K State. Oh, K State. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, KU won yesterday easily over Who'd North. They beat? they beat a team called Northeastern. Okay. Um, and uh, beat them by 25 or 30 points. And of course, the big big news today was the Hawkeyes with the big upset over you Cincinnati. You believe that? Yeah, they played really well. They really Especially did. in the second half. And, uh, Garza and you know the good news is Garza is a sophomore. He played extremely well. 
Wieskamp played very, very well. He's a freshman. And then Bohannon had a good second half and is, is a junior. So um, those three guys really carried him in the second half. And, and uh, you know, Iowa was down 18-5 to five early in that they game. They were. Oh, and I, I just oh. – I was out at the sports page watching it, and I thought, oh, my gosh, I'm going to be going home early with this one, you know. <laughs> and then uh, they had a late run in the first half to cut it to five. Right. And uh, and then came right out in the second half and, and – it took them a minute or two to take the lead, and then it was back and forth. And then late in the game, Iowa opened up a, a, a nice lead and, and never relinquished it. So it was a great great comeback win for the Hawks. And now they're probably going to end up playing the second seed, really good Tennessee team on Sunday. So uh, that'll be interesting. So I, uh, you know, I still have high. If, if they can pull it together like that, they, uh, I know Tyler Cook took his teammates out on the court away from the bench and huddled with them. You know, and they seem to get something from that, you know. Yeah. You know, interesting enough, Cook, I don't think Cook made a basket today. Uh, he had a couple. He ha he really had a trouble, didn't he? He couldn't score. He had a couple free throws, and he had some big rebounds, but he was in foul trouble most of the game. And, um, you know, a lot of these kids, when they get in yeah, foul trouble. he had two fouls, what, in yeah. the first four minutes or yeah. something. Yeah. And, you know, you get in foul trouble and kind of screws you up mentally at times, and you end up having a bad game. And mm -hmm. uh, he came up big in the end. He had two big free throws in the last minute or two and he had a couple big rebounds. But um, Iowa shot 11 for 22 from the three-point line. And when they shoot well from outside, then they're tough. If they don't shoot well from the outside, then it seems like anybody can beat them. And that's kind of the formula for a lot of teams. And, and uh and then, of course, tonight, late, 845 game, I think it is, start, is the, the Cyclones are going to be taking on Ohio State. And that'll be an interesting ball game, too. So that'll be uh, – uh, we'll have a late night tonight watching that one. What channel is that on? Do you know right off the top of your head? You know, I don't know. Uh, you know, it'll either be on uh, – I'm guessing a late game like that probably won't be on, on CBS Channel 8. I, I'm guessing it'll be on either TNT or – or TBS, one yeah, of those two well, teams. Yeah, well, that makes yeah. sense, actually. Um, but uh, that'll be a good one, and be uh, it'd be great to see if if the cl if the clones could uh, win that one. You know, they are uh, the higher seed and uh, and uh, uh, expected to win. But you know, in the NCAA, anything can happen. You know, in the in the in the big dance. And uh, uh, you know, it's interesting as I was driving out to the sports page, I had on the the radio, and they were interviewing the head coach from Cincinnati and I thought man this guy's cocky he sounded like he wasn't even worried about this game he was just talking to, he just I just got to feel like this guy thought they were going to come in and take the Hawkeyes apart and then get ready for their next game they probably did feel that and uh so yeah, I, I loved watching uh, the Hawks come back and beat the Cincinnati Bearcats uh, you know maybe Franz got him right uh, he's got them there at the right time same deal with Chrome. I'm sorry to hear, by the way, that Prom's being looked at by Alabama. I hope he likes Iowa better than Alabama. <laughs> well, I, you know, I saw that too, and I thought I, I, I'd be absolutely shocked that Alabama could get him because, you know, Alabama's football country for heaven's sakes. You know, oh, it is and, heavy. And you That's know, a, I, do you even know if Alabama has any other sports? No, you don't. Yeah, I mean, it's you're you everything is secondary to football in Alabama, obviously, and and. Uh, I mean, why would you want to leave uh, Iowa State uh, unless Alabama is going to pay him five million dollars a year or something? But you know, uh, he's got a great job at Iowa State. He's doing an outstanding job. They've got a tremendous fan base there. They're in a great conference. Yeah. I mean, what what else do you want? I mean, um, and uh, so it it'll be uh, uh, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But you know how that goes. You know, one rumor gets started and they float it out there. And, that just drives teams crazy because here you are getting ready to play a big game in the NCAA tournament, and now you got this kind of a distraction out there that could be absolutely there could be absolutely nothing behind it other yeah. than maybe some alumni making a comment publicly or something right, right. that it doesn't have a clue. It's never talked to Steve Prohm, and you know, so I'm I'm guessing that's more really what it, what it's all and about. And of course, Fred Hoiberg's in Des Moines in the stands. Yeah, uh, and so. Oh, what's this mean? You know, uh, that's, yeah. real, that's real talk radio stuff, you know, that's, yeah. and, and they do it on television as well. Yeah. By the way, I'd like to, uh, to acknowledge uh, a real sports uh, fan listening to us uh, here. Julianne Kershillis coming over here to buy me dinner, which I appreciate. So 
Uh, yeah, big Iowa State wow. fan. Big Iowa State fan. Is she? Well, great. You're going to watch the game then? And... I believe we're going to watch All the right. game. I, I think I'll let her take me out to some place here in town. Maybe, yeah. Maybe lefties or the sports page. Or yeah. I don't know how you pulled that deal off with her. I've seen her, and I, I just – See, that's you know, the Mulholland position. That's <laughs> that Mulholland's always say, oh, I can't believe you. You're with Julie. Julie's so much me. You know, she's way too good for you. You know, and Julie told him I was great at sex. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Julie, Julie straightened him out. I said, well, he's, you know, he's really good at sex. Oh. And, and that, and, uh. and Mulholland could not accept that. He yeah. just went to pieces. He just <laughs> I'm went not to even going to touch it. So. You're not. Yeah. No, no. no, you're red in the face. Yeah. I, uh, still, <laughs> I shouldn't say that. You'll turn around and go home. Yeah. <laughs> but it's out there now. So there we yeah, go. No, she's, she's, I've met her. She's a nice gal. And, oh, yeah. 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 So I am a lucky guy. There's oh, yeah, no doubt no about question. that. I'm not lucky. You know, no it, question. Mullen just, Mulholland just does not appreciate me. He just—he doesn't think I have any skill. Doesn't think I know anything about anything. And well, he's on the other side of the political aisle from you. He's you know? a little bit on the other <laughs> side. Yes, I'm a lawyer and I know all and see all and give me money. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, he's—he's he's on his way to Omaha to watch his Blue Jays play in the NIT over in. You know. I, I just assumed that's where he was yeah. at. Yeah. Yeah, he's. Uh, um, and they'll be interesting because if they win tonight and, and if Nebraska wins their game, then actually Creighton will play Nebraska in Omaha for the to go to the to the final four of the NIT. So that would mm. be a, for Omaha and Nebraska, that'd be a huge game. Yeah, that and, would. And, and really, hopefully a nice distraction because, my gosh, I've seen those pictures of Nebraska. That whole state's underwater. It's just it is. Isn't it's it? It's horrible. I've never seen anything so bad in my you know, life. And I, I don't. I don't think I've ever heard of Nebraska flooding like that. Yeah, you know, and and I just I was watching the news last night, and they were interviewing this this hog farmer over there. He's lost seven hundred head of hogs. Wow, really? Seven hundred head. I just can't imagine, you know, and and uh, it's really a tragic thing over there. So who's uh, who's Creighton playing again? Creighton is playing. Uh, who are they playing tonight? Jeez, I forgot. It, they're a team that they probably should beat. Oh, they're playing Memphis. Memphis. Yeah, and Memphis is not bad. They're an athletic team, and so it'll be an interesting game. And you know, but uh, I would think with the home court advantage, and they're playing pretty well at the end of the season, I would expect them to, to right. handle Memphis. So it's another case of Catholics versus convicts down there in Memphis, or what? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't yeah. know anything about Memphis. Memphis is a nice city, as far as I know. I yeah, mean, I drove to the end. The only but I heck, I've only driven through there once. So yeah, well, they've had a great basketball tradition there. You know, I mean, and and uh, um, and some outstanding coaches have gone through Memphis and, and moved on. Yeah. Uh, so do they have a pro team there? Uh, yes, they do. The Redbirds. Uh, it's not the well. No, it's the uh, what is it? Memphis Grizzlies. Grizzlies, that's right. Memphis, Memphis yeah. Memphis Redbirds are a Triple A baseball team oh, that, that play Iowa. Or, okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the Memphis Grizzlies. You know, it's so, another another. You know, this team is a, you never hear anything about. To me, if you love basketball, this is maybe the best weekend of, of absolutely. Of it is. You know, yeah. and and ironically, I, I don't. I mean, I I was listening to the. Uh, the Hawkeye women won a tough game at home. Yes. You know, they're in the NCAA tournament. Drake plays. They're playing right now. I don't even know what that score is. Drake's mm -hmm. playing Missouri in Iowa City. If Drake would beat Missouri, then Iowa would play Drake mm -hmm. yeah. in, in, in Iowa City, which would be interesting. And, of course, Iowa State, I, they play tonight as well, the women. And they're at they're in Ames. They're playing at home mm -hmm. as well. So, um you know, basketball, both men and women, just, I mean, there's five in-state games going on today in the NCAA tournament. There really is. You know, yeah. and, and uh, so um, hopefully uh, the uh, the clones will have a great, great game like the Hawks did. I, You know, I, I thought that second half, half that the Hawks played might have been the best half of basketball they've played all year. They really put it together against a, a good Cincinnati team, very athletic team, and uh, – and they could have folded early, and they they uh, buckled down and, and fought back in that thing. And I, I give them all the credit in the world. You know, and it's funny because it's kind of been our criticism all year is, is they seem to have not had that that winning instinct at the end of games, you know, this year. They lost a lot of close games. And they won a few close games on last-second shots. I know that mm -hmm. too. But, um, 
uh, boy, they they really bared down and 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 made the plays in the last, especially the last ten minutes of the mm. second half. And 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 Cincinnati didn't make the plays, didn't make the baskets, and and uh, uh, so it was uh, it was a great victory for the Hawkeyes. And and it'll be an interesting matchup with Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee is very uh, athletic team. You know, for probably five six weeks this year, Tennessee was ranked number one in the country, mm -hmm. and then they lost a few games late. Um, they, uh, and, and, uh, so they didn't finish out real strong, but they did beat Kentucky at the end of the season. Actually, they beat Kentucky in their tournament and then Auburn turned around and beat Tennessee in the final game. But, um, Tennessee's awful good. They're very athletic and, and, uh, it'll be a interesting matchup to see, uh, see how the Hawks can, can do against Minnesota. But you know, Iowa plays a schedule in the big 10, you know, big 10 had eight teams in the uh, the dance this year, which is the most of any mm -hmm. conference, and all eight teams won, yeah, including Minnesota with a big upset win over Louisville and Des Moines just yesterday. They right? handled them too. Yeah, they, handled they them. did. They did. They were very impressive. And so the Big Ten right now is is looking awful good, and and uh, hopefully they can keep winning and see where this thing goes. I really think that your wife is way too good for you, Randy. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Devine, the mayor of Manville. It's a fancy title for a part-time job. <laughs> Michael Devine at AM 1400 KVFD. You don't have bad luck. The reason that bad things happen to you is because you're a dumbass. Michael Devine, the doctor of truth. Does anyone have anything they'd like to confess? At AM 1400 KVFD. I wondered why bad things happened to me. Now I know. Randy Coleman is our guest. We're talking sports, of course. And as Randy made note of, man, this is the week for basketball fans. This is the week. And uh, if you have uh, something to add, it's 515-955-1400. And Jill Mulholland's too good for Nevin, too, by the way. I want to hold them like they do in Texas, please. Hold them. If you love them enough to listen to them practice the same song on tuba, please be done. Over and over and over and over and over. Then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. Sounds good, honey. Check today at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Act Council. From the Fox Business Network on Wall Street, the major average is falling sharply. Weak economic data is sparking fears among investors that the global economy's growth is slowing. With the Dow falling 460 points, Nasdaq down 196, S&P 500 down 54. And soon after, President Trump criticized General Motors for closing its Lordstown, Ohio plant. GM CEO Mary Barra tells Fox Business the automaker is undeniably committed to growing jobs in the U.S., with Barra making an announcement today involving its assembly plant in Orion, Michigan. We are investing $300 million and we'll be creating 400 jobs here. And it's not just brackets that are being busted during March Madness. The average American may be spending more money than usual. With the average bet on the NCAA tournament, 20 to 50 bucks, according to WalletHub. And office productivity also taking a hit. WalletHub estimates that employers face $4 billion in corporate losses due to unproductive workers. With the Fox Business Report, I'm Hilary Barsky. <laughs> The worst commercial ever. Uh, say, Jan, as a fellow respected small business professional, I wonder, who do you use for commercial auto and business insurance? Progressive, of course. They helped with a customized insurance solution for my busy florist company. I'm so glad we had this chance encounter in this busy restaurant. <laughs> yes, that fake conversation was brutal. Whereas commercial auto and business insurance through Progressive is anything but. Visit ProgressiveCommercial.com to quote today. Insurance provided in service by Progressive Casualty Insurance Company. It's affiliated in third-party insurers. Your news, your town, your station. KVFD News when it breaks. Good afternoon. I'm Alice Benzigal with the KVFD Afternoon News. The Iowa State Patrol says a Ford Dodge woman was killed in a two-vehicle accident Thursday afternoon. The accident happened on the Kenyon Road Bridge in Ford Dodge when a westbound 2006 Chevy Impala driven by 89-year-old Marvin Holsey of Ford Dodge crossed the raised median and struck an eastbound 2003 Dodge Dakota pickup truck driven by David L. Stone of Harcourt. 
A passenger in the Holsey car, 85-year-old Ruth Smith of Ford Dodge, was pronounced dead at the accident scene. Holsey was airlifted to a Des Moines hospital for treatment of his injuries. Stone was transported to Uni Point Trinity Regional Medical Center in Ford Dodge for treatment and was reported in stable condition. The Democratic governor of Louisiana and a Republican congressional leader are criticizing Iowa Congressman Steve King for King's remarks about hurricane victims in their state. King was in Charter Oak for a town hall meeting and compared victims of Hurricane Katrina in 2005 to Iowans dealing with floodwaters now. We're Iowans and I'm always proud of our reaction to this. I've worked with the FEMA people for a long time, but here's what FEMA tells me. We go to a place like New Orleans and everybody's looking around saying, who's going to help me? Who's going to help me? And they're just always gratified when they come and see how Iowans take care of each other. And so that's a that's a point of pride that spreads across the country. Congressman Steve Scalise, the second ranking Republican in the House, represents the New Orleans suburbs. Scalise calls King's remarks absurd and offensive and a complete contradiction to how the people of New Orleans responded to the devastation of Hurricane Katrina. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards, a Democrat, tweeted that King's comments were disgusting and disappointing. King tweeted yesterday that he's working to restore free speech to the halls of Congress. During his remarks in Charter Oak yesterday, King said in 2005 he made four visits to New Orleans to tour the devastation. First member of Congress to go in down there. Um, you broke some rules to go there. I'll just confess to that. And uh, <clears throat> flew into the airport and just keep the mic and asked permission to land. They gave it to us, so we went in. And uh, I saw that from the air and from the ground and went back and did what we could to help those folks down there. King toured flood damage at Missouri Valley and Hornick yesterday, promising to work closely with local leaders to help Iowans recover from the disaster. King said as the only Republican in Iowa's congressional delegation, he won't hesitate to use his influence with President Trump to help Iowans gain access to federal flood relief. A Northwest Iowa school principal has resigned, but it's unclear why, as Radio Iowa's Joel Herman reports. The Stormont Community School District has accepted the resignation of Bo Rulo as principal of the high school. District Superintendent Dr. Stacy Cole says the resignation is effective immediately following an investigation that revealed a violation of district policies. Cole says they want to assure families and community members that at no time was student safety compromised. The district will soon begin the process of finding the next high school principal. In the meantime, Cole will serve as acting principal. Joel Herman, Radio Iowa, Storm Lake. I'm Alex Benzgal with the KVFD Afternoon News. Have a great day. Here's the AM 1400 KVFD weatherology forecast. Bright sunshine expected this afternoon with a high of 52. Northeasterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Lows level off around 29 tonight. Daytime highs approaching 55 tomorrow. Chance for scattered showers. High of 51 Sunday with a chance for scattered rain showers. D1. From the Weatherology Weather Center, I'm staff meteorologist Derek Height. Currently, it's 51 degrees. Gunderson Funeral Home and Cremation Services. Oh, why not just cremate me when I'm gone? Sounds simple, doesn't it? However, there are many options to consider when cremation is chosen. From simple to detailed, we at Gunderson Funeral Home and Cremation Services can help you create a unique commemoration. Gunderson Funeral Home and Cremation Services. Hey guys, Ken here from the hit podcast, Today's Growth. Who would win a three-mile bicycle race, an 11-year-old girl or last year's winner of the Tour de France? It all depends on the bicycle. It depends on their vehicle. Both on a 10-speed and the pro racer is going to win every time. But put the racer on a tricycle and the 11-year-old wins every time. You see, it's not the driver. It's the vehicle. When it comes to generating revenue, it's exactly the same. If you have a job or a small business, you are riding a tricycle. You can only go so fast. If you need to make up lost ground, it's not going to happen on a tricycle. No matter how fast you pedal, it's simply not going to win the race. Why do many people with no schooling and no advanced degree often become very wealthy? Simple. They choose to only ride 10 speeds. When it comes to helping people create their next revenue model, both Forbes and Inc. recommend Income Store as a can't miss when it comes to putting people on a 10 speed. Could your household or business use an additional revenue model that doesn't solely depend on you? If so, you need to check out IncomeStore.com. That's IncomeStore.com. This is AM 1400, KVFT, the voice of Fort Dodge 437. I've given uh, Nevin, and I hope I can do this without causing any controversy, I've given Nevin Mulholland his Indian name, American Indian name. 
uh, he who cannot handle the truth. So there you go. Uh, this uh, The obituary is this hour brought to you by the historic Bruce's Funeral Home. The historic Bruce's Funeral Home is at 923 First Avenue South here in Fort Dodge. You may contact the historic Bruce's Funeral Home by calling 515-576-5117 or online at www.brucesfuneralhome.com. Mark Kennedy of Humboldt, formerly of Fort Dodge, died on Wednesday at his home following an illness. In lieu of a funeral, a gathering of friends and family will be held at Deer Creek Golf Club in Humboldt this Sunday from 1 to 4. Obituaries this hour brought to you by the historic Bruce's Funeral Home at 923 First Avenue, South Fort Dodge. You may contact the historic Bruce's Funeral Home by calling 515-576-5117 or online at www.brucesfuneralhome.com. Randy Kuhlman will talk sports at AM 1400 KVFD next. What's in store for your business this week at Staples? A printer with more ink than you think. The Epson EcoTank printer comes with up to two years of ink included right in the box. So you can print up to two years worth of reports and proposals. Just think about how much you'll save on ink. And right now at Staples, save $100 on the Epson EcoTank 4750. Plus, when you trade in your old printer in store, you'll save an additional $50. Staples, there's a whole lot in store. Hence 32319, see associate for details. Michael DeMine, the mayor of Manville. It's a fancy title for a part-time job. <laughs> Michael DeMine at AM 1400 KVFD. He who cannot handle the truth. That is the name of uh, Nevin Mulholland in certain areas. Anyway, with me is Randy Kilman, uh, who also traumatized a high school friend of mine by throwing a touchdown pass over his head when we were in high school 49 years ago. <laughs> well, that was only 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, I think it was only 20 years ago, yeah. Anyway, Randy Coleman and I are talking sports. There's a lot to talk about, man. And of course, uh, Randy's real thing is basketball, and you're really in heaven with it. And it's, a, and it's an exciting time, really. Everybody, you know, people who don't pay attention to you, it's it's even better than the World Series. People who don't pay attention to baseball all year all of a sudden focus on the World Series. Uh, it's. I think it's even more now when people may not pay attention to basketball. Also. Right, man. Now they're on. They got pools going on. I mean, there's yeah. pools going on all Everywhere. over the place. You know, they say that mm. it's uh, this week, Thursday and Friday. Of this week is the least productive week in in business in in the, <laughs> in the country. That wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, about I can believe it. Yeah, <laughs> and there's uh, there's some money being bet and a lot of friendly pools, and I'm in a couple of them, and they're fun. Mm. And, uh, and, and, you know, when you're in a pool and all of a sudden you, you start paying a little bit more attention to some of these other teams yeah, yeah. that are in your bracket that you've selected that you don't know hardly anything about, you know, sure. like, like you said, the, uh, uh, Cal Irvine anteaters and taking out, uh, Cal Irvine, you believe the university of California yeah. Irvine anteaters. Yep. And, uh, Man. I gotta, I gotta, you know, I picked them because of my college roommate lives out in La Jolla. And he's very familiar with, he's a former basketball player with me when I was in college. And he, so he follows it very closely. And he, I, he uh, emailed me and he says, Hey, watch out for these anteaters. They're tough. And so I picked really? him over K state and K state was, you know, one of their best players was out Dean Wade, uh, really good player for K state, uh, his foot injury flared back up again. And so for the second year in a row, he's missed the tournament, and that, that's a huge loss for K State. And and uh, but yeah, they went down to the Anteaters. So, um, but <laughs> the Anteaters and uh, Auburn almost got beat uh, in a very one point game. And so the, it's always interesting. And there, there may be a Cinderella team. Remember Loyola last year was the Cinderella team, and and uh, was it Sister Trudy was their their. You know, got yeah. all, that, all that national publicity and it took Loyola to the final four. It took I think. Loyola to the final four. And Bill Murray was in Des Moines. I didn't know. Yeah. His, I didn't know his son was in that uh, in, in the basketball that much. His I son is assistant coach for Louisville. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. And uh, what's the son's name? It's something that, I don't know. But you know, I, I my he wife, had a son named Omer. My uh, my wife was she she flew to Florida to see her sister. She was in the Des Moines airport yesterday, and. Uh, uh, and she was talking to somebody and, and they flew into Des Moines next to Bill Murray. <laughs> would that be fun? Be on the same airplane and sit yeah. next to Bill Murray on, on the way to that Des Moines, right. Iowa. That would be all right. But, uh, he went away disappointed because the uh, Louisville got, got handled pretty easily by yeah. Minnesota. You know, in Louisville, you used to just rule, you know, Louisville was one of the top teams yeah. in the country. 
Well, and they, you know, they've had a good year, but they're going to, they've had, they've got the second ranked recruiting class coming in next year. So Louisville, yeah, Louisville is going to be back at, in that top 10 probably in not too long a period of yeah, time. Yeah. They've got a really good coach there. The, uh, Chris Mack is his name and he used to be at, uh, he had great success at Xavier and then he took the Loyola job last year or this past year. And, you know, when they fired Patino and, uh, and has done a, a really good job with what most people thought was going to be a bad team. Mm -hmm. And he, he, he gave them a winning year. So they've, they've, uh, uh, but you hate to go out, you know, have a good year in with, a uh, you know, uh, laying an egg in the first round of the NCAA tournament. So that always puts, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth when that happens. I'm going to make the pick here. I think I did it last week. I think Ohio State is going to take Ohio State. Yeah, I do too. I do too. Ohio State uh, has uh, has been up and down, and uh, they have at times rose up and 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 played extremely well. But I think they didn't. They finished the season. They didn't finish it very strong, and and uh, so I I think that uh, uh, Ohio State will handle them, and then they'll end up playing. Houston probably mm -hmm. on Sunday and uh, Houston is has been in the top five for a big part of the season. Sure. They're, they're an outstanding team, um, but they don't play. Uh, they play in the, the same conference as Cincinnati. Right. Um, and it's a good conference. It's not as strong as the big 12 um, or the big 10. And so it's, uh, uh, it'll be interesting. I think Iowa State. I mean, Iowa State's proven that they can pro pretty much play with everybody, and uh, uh, until you get to the the big boys like Duke and North Carolina, you know. But even Virginia, who's only got three, one, you know, Virginia won the ACC, which is the best conference in college basketball this year, and they were behind by 14 points to Garner Webb early in that in the game today. Yeah, they came uh, back, and I didn't see the final score, but they were up 12 or 14 on them on Garner Webb late in the second half. So I'm assuming they won, but right. Right. Um, so, but yeah, anything can happen. And that's what, that's what is kind of neat about the, the tournament. Cause you can have these small Cinderella teams get hot and knock some teams off. And then really well, makes I, well, things I, interesting. I saw in the years ago, uh, in a section of the Ford Dodge messenger the other day, I think it was yesterday that, uh, yesterday was the ninth anniversary of you and I, uh, oh. And their big upset. Who did they beat? I don't even remember. Now. Beat Kansas. Beat Kansas. Kansas That's was right. a number one seed. Yes, yes, they yeah. were. That's right. Alex, Kansas was number one. Alex Rockmanesh. Yes. Whatever happened to that guy? I wonder. He's an assistant coach at uh, where is he? He's, a, he's an assistant coach somewhere. I think he's somewhere in the big. I think he's in the Big Twelve somewhere. As an assistant, assistant coach. Yeah. 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 Uh, that that was a. I think that was another time, and I. I I don't get into this much because Nevin's such a uh, KU fan, but I have bet on Ken on Kansas, either Kansas State or KU, especially KU, several times over the years. In something like the 2010 effort to happen, <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I I remember I was oh 20 years ago I was on the air, 25 years ago maybe I was on the air and I was just assuring everybody that. Uh, well, let's see, it was around the time Rafe LaFriends was playing. So it was probably the oh, mid-90s. Yeah. Uh, and I was assuring everyone that uh, Kansas was going to go all the way. Well, they didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they didn't. They bombed out early that year yeah. for whatever reason. Yeah, it and, can happen. Uh, oh. and, and and actually, Bill Self, uh, who has just dominated the Big 12, he's won, he won 14 straight conference championships in the Big 12. And then this year was the first year in 15 years he hadn't won it. But uh, – uh, you know, his, his NCAA record is pretty mediocre. He did win a national championship uh, a few years back, but uh, he's had a number of – Bill Self won with uh, Kansas. Kansas, yeah. Yeah. And uh, – but uh, he's had a, a number of, of uh, teams that were seeded number one that, yeah. that got knocked out, didn't even maybe make it to the Sweet 16 or they didn't get to the Final Eight. And, you know, every once in a while he'll get to the final four. But he's as good a program as he's had over the years. I, I think if you looked at his NCAA record, it, it would probably surprise you that it's it's not as strong as his regular season record by by any means. Yeah, yeah. Gosh. Uh, I, you know, uh, and we've talked about Gonzaga before, and, you know, I was clueless about Gonzaga uh, because – 
I, I, God's sake, it's just a small Catholic college in, in really a small town, Spokane, Washington, yeah. is about the size of Des Moines. Yeah. You know, and where they came from, I, I caught a little bit of their game the other night, and they were who were they? They were just killing something. Yeah. It was just terrible. Like forty points they were beating them by. I can't remember who it was, but uh, I haven't really, you know, that was such a one sided game. You really can't judge somebody by that. But yeah. Uh, are, are they still the top dog? I mean, they're one seed and. Uh, you know, everybody's picking Duke. Everybody, um, yeah. Some are picking North Carolina. I don't Carolina. want to pick Duke because if I pick somebody, that's a kiss of death. <laughs> well, uh, but uh, Gonzaga is a one seed, and, and uh, you know, they beat Duke early in the year out in Hawaii. Gonzaga uh, did? Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, that va vaulted them to number one for a while. And uh, But they're a unique program because they play in a kind of a mid-major conference. Yeah. So they play a early season schedule. They play all the big boys because they, you know, they're at that level, but they know that once their conference play, they kind of get lost because no one covers them then, you know, yeah. nationally mm -hmm. very much. Um, and uh, so they play a tough pre-conference schedule against really good teams. Uh, and they fared this year, they fared very, very well. So, uh, although Tennessee beat Gonzaga this year uh, in December, and uh, uh, but uh, uh, they'll they'll be an interesting it's an interesting program. They get a lot of transfers in, Mike. They mm -hmm. get they get transfers in from all over the country. And uh, Mark Few, the coach out there, he's been there many many years. Extremely good coach. Um, the job he does recruiting to Spokane and then, and then getting these transfers in every year, he puts together a really good team. And they're always, they're always right there every mm -hmm. year for the last 10, 15 years. And of course, the, you know, the great pro NBA player that came out of Gonzaga was, was, uh, uh, John Stockton. Oh yeah. And, uh, that's right. Yeah. And, uh, and so he, he was a star at Gonzaga <laughs> and then went on and, had a great career in the NBA and, and is still the the all time lead assist leader in NBA history and no one's even close to it. So it's uh, uh, you know I haven't thought of John Stockman in a number of years. I was watching ESPN just the other night and they had a shot of him sitting up in the stands. Apparently he's got a daughter that plays basketball. Yeah, and she's pretty good. Yeah, and a couple of years ago he had a son that played for for uh, Gonzaga. I mean he was just a Kind of a role player for right, him, right? Right. But yeah, he 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 goes to all the games and and uh, he's a huge. Uh, you know, I think he lives. I think he lives there in Spokane and and does uh, he? Yeah, I think so. And uh, uh, and so he's uh, yeah he's a, he's a celebrity. He's kind of like like the mayor, you know. And and, uh, and yeah, that's right. Uh, Again, I don't. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. I don't know, and I could be proven wrong. It's happened before, certainly. I don't think Hoiberg's coming back to college ball. I don't think he is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You know, there's a lot of people that that think that uh, he's kind of waiting for his shot with the Timberwolves. He's got a relationship with right, the, yeah, with the owner up there, um, and that's what he really wants. Uh, but there is a lot, as Nevin said last week. You know, and he's he's got a lot of friends over in Omaha that are big Nebraska fans and follow them closely. And there's a lot of ch chatter over in Omaha about uh, Hoiberg and uh, going to Nebraska. Don't do it, Fred. Don't do it to us. Don't go to Nebraska, for God's sake. You, you want to go out to, to Minnesota or someplace fine, but Nebraska? <laughs> Come on, man. Well, they've got – Nebraska's got great facilities, and they've got a lot of money, and that can be attractive. It's still Nebraska. And, you know, and believe it or not, uh, they've got a good fan base there for basketball, so – you know, it's not as uh, unattractive as some people might think it is, but um, it's one of those programs where you've got to, you know, kind of like Iowa, you got to go outside the state and have success recruiting and bringing kids in because you just don't year in, year out, have four or five or six Division One type players. Uh, that I just cannot abide a city whose main through fair is Cornhusker Avenue. I cannot deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, uh, it'll be interesting to see what happened. And, and, uh, and you're starting to, uh, hear stories now. Uh, the, uh, is it Scott drew, I think at, 
<clears throat> at Vanderbilt just got fired. So you're going to start hearing about the, now that the season's coming to an end, coaches getting fired, and then there'll be a lot of talk about who's going to replace or t- get that job. And How about McCaffrey? <laughs> no, well, probably not. He just got the big no, pay increase. He, yeah, I wonder what they're paying. <laughs> After winning one game in the NCAA, Barter probably gave him another half a million. Probably gave him another <laughs> oh, half a million. Oh, he probably gave him a couple of million. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. oh, man. I, you know, we must have an inferiority complex in Iowa to pay people that kind of money just to get them to stay here. That's just. Well, the thing that bugs me is it almost seems like, and, and I'm talking about basketball now, because, but I, I just think that we, we pay big money to be mediocre. And, Boy, we do. And, you know, McCaffrey's been there. This I can't believe I'm saying this. He's been there nine years now. Like, I gosh, can't believe that. Yeah, I know it. I, I would have guessed five, you yeah. know, but he's been there nine years and, uh, and has, has had a pretty mediocre record. Uh, even though I know he came in there and took a program that was at rock bottom and has made us made Iowa respectable. Uh, but it's kind of like we go 10 and 10 in the big 10. And, and as, as McCaffrey said, we've had a spectacular or fantastic year, you know, and, and I, I think most Iowans would think, well, I'm not sure 10 and 10 in the big 10, you could say is a fantastic year, but, um, you know, so it is what it is and we'll keep rooting for the Hawks and yeah, see, see how they do. Uh, absolutely. So, but, um, yeah, and I don't know, you know, there's, there'll be some interesting moves to make with UCLA's job open and, and, uh, Alabama's job is going to be open. Um, uh, and I don't know if anybody else in the big 12 is, is, uh, on the hot seat. I don't think anybody in the big 12 is or in the big 10. I think uh, you're not going to see much happen there. Um, so uh, Wake Forest, a job is going to, I think Danny Manning's going to be history at Wake Forest. So what the he rumor just, is. <clears throat> he was a great college ball player. Oh, fantastic. And he had a decent broker. Yeah. I just don't think he's been there. I haven't seen his success as a college coach. I don't yeah. Know. Well, he had some success at Tulsa, and then he got the Wake Forest job. Wake Forest is a tough job because you're in North Carolina, and you're constantly battling Duke and North Carolina. Yeah. And then you've got, you know, North Carolina State right there as well. Um, So you're a smaller private school on the west, kind of in the central west part of North Carolina. You know, it's tough to have long-term success at Wake Forest, whether it's in football (laughs) or basketball, you know. I mean, if you look at both programs – they typically are at the bottom of a of a tough league. So, um, I mean, look you look at the ACC. Um, three of the top four seeds were from the ACC. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> you yeah. Know? The Atlantic Coast Conference is just yeah. awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, you know, it, it's like it's like going down there to play football. You know, uh, I watch the Hawkeyes even in their good years. And then I watch Clemson and Alabama. Yeah. We're not in that league. Yeah. You know, no, I, I, nobody is, though. Yeah, and I understand that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there may be, there's always the Pac 12 team out there, you know. So oh, no. you don't think well, so. used to be USC, but they've been down now for a number of years. I, I think but, I've heard they're making a little bit of a comeback. But anyway, well, they, they're, you're, they're, they're recruiting, uh, you know, they're, they're uh, letting anybody in that is willing to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I wonder what's going to happen with Urban Meyer. I'm getting off. I'm getting way off the subject here, but uh, I guess the point I'm trying to make is that uh, uh, the, I don't know how the Atlantic Coast Conference does it because it, here we are, the same situation in basketball. Here we are with Duke and North Carolina, and <clears throat> all the big schools, the big tough basketball schools are in the Atlantic Coast Conference. You know, how come that in, in the Big Ten, Urban Meyer said when he came back to Ohio State, let's face it. You know, down down in the southeast part of the uh, the country, we don't even think about the Big Ten anymore. Well, yeah, and but it's I mean, you get out there on the East Coast and in the South, there's so many athletes. There's so many. There, you know, it's a huge population base. There it is. And uh, there's just so many athletes. It's just a lot easier to recruit uh, a young man to your school if he lives within a hundred miles of your school. Uh, when you look at, I mean, look at Luca Garza from Iowa. He's from Maryland. Yeah. I mean, and 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 that's a heck of a recruit. He was a four-star yeah. recruit for mm-hmm. for McCaffrey, and and uh, he had a good game today. He had a great game, and but it's hard to go that far away from home and and have a lot of success in recruiting. 
outstanding athletes and, and, uh, uh, and, you know, there's just the population base on the East coast, uh, for both football and especially basketball players. I mean, they're just loaded, uh, with talent and, and heck there's talent coming out of North Carolina, the best player for Creighton, uh, guy named Alexander, I believe is from, uh, North Carolina. Really? Yeah. And, uh, so North the, Carolina. Yeah. And, there's a lot of good players that come out of those Virginia, North Carolina area. Uh, South I wonder Carolina. if we lose any. Well, I mentioned late April Prince there a while ago. That was one of our best players from a little tiny town, uh, consolidated school district up in the northeast part of the state. I don't know if we lose a lot of our uh, top basketball talent out of state or not. Well, yeah, we do. I mean, we've lost uh, Harrison Barnes, who went to North Harrison, Carolina. Harrison, I should have So did the, uh, what's the kid's young man's name out of Linmar that was the guard for North Carolina? Uh, my my memory is terrible anymore, but yeah, I know. Little left-handed, really outstanding five-star point guard out of Lindmar that went to North Carolina as well. Uh, of course, you know Nick Collison, who was phenomenal for Iowa Falls. He went to Kansas along with Heinrich. Uh, yeah. Kirk Heinrich went to Kansas. So traditionally, the top if you're a four or five-star player in Iowa, many times you don't end up at Iowa or Iowa State. You're Boy. going somewhere else, which is unfortunate. You know the. the Point guard DJ Carton out of Bettendorf this year is going for heaven's sakes to Ohio State. I oh, mean, that's a big no, that's one that Iowa really missed on. And, uh, you know, and then there's the big kid from Oskaloosa, now the seven footer that's a junior who is a four or five star. That's uh, Xavier Foster, I think his name is. And everybody's after him. So it'll be interesting to see if they can, we can keep him in state or if he's going to end up going to a Kansas or going maybe to uh, out east to a. North Carolina or Duke or somewhere like that. He's seven foot, can shoot the threes, very athletic. Yeah. Randy Kuhlman has been our guest. Thanks a lot, Randy. I'll you tell bet. you. You know, you're pumped for uh for oh, yeah. uh, March Madness, and that's good. Yes. All right, it's five o'clock. Thanks everybody for listening. This is KBFD for Dodge Island. Hi, this is Leslie Segretti. And I'm Tom Kreitler. And you can hear The Money Pit every Saturday afternoon from 4 to 6 on The Voice of Fort Dodge, AM 1400, KVFD, Fort Dodge. This is a Fox News alert. It's concluded. I'm Lisa LaSera. Special Counsel Robert Mueller has finished the investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election. It's now in the hands of Attorney General William Barr. Robert Mueller began his investigation into possible connections between the Trump presidential campaign and Russian officials in May of 2017. Before leaving for Florida, President Trump continued to claim there was no collusion between his campaign and Russia. There was no collusion. There was no obstruction. Everybody knows it. It's all a big hoax. Attorney General Barr, in a letter to leaders of the House and Senate Judiciary Committees, said that he will consult with Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein and Special Counsel Mueller to determine what information from the report can be released to Congress and the public. Barr also said he may make principal conclusions of the report available to Congress as soon as this weekend. Fox's John Decker at the White House, a senior de Department of Justice official, telling Fox that Special Counsel Mueller is not recommending any further indictments. A government watchdog group finds FEMA released the personal information of millions of victims of recent hurricanes and wildfires to a contractor. Fox's Joy Piazza has this live. The breach affects 2.3 million survivors of recent disasters like Hurricanes Harvey, Irma, and Maria, as well as survivors of the 2017 California wildfires. According to the Homeland Security's Office of the Inspector General, personal information like bank names and electronic transfer numbers were accidentally leaked to this contractor. The contractor who got this information was working with FEMA to help victims get temporary housing. FEMA says it's working with the contractor to erase the data. Lisa? Thanks, Joy. Big losses on Wall Street. The Dow lost 460 points. The NASDAQ off 196. The S&P off 54. This is Fox News. Texting enrolls for recurring automated marketing text messages. Message data rates may apply. Texting privacy rules and terms and conditions at textrules.us. Has dinner got you down? Sick of awful frozen meals or unhealthy fast food? Don't despair because Martha Stewart is doing a free taste test, giving away three full-sized meals from her new meal kit delivery service, Martha and Marley Spoon. All fresh ingredients with Martha's delicious and easy recipes. You're eating in just 30 minutes. To be part of Martha's at-home taste test and get three free meals, be one of the 
first 100 people to text the word FOOD to 246810. It's so easy. Text us now. Martha and Marley Spoon Meals are easy, simple, and delicious. And right now, Martha wants you to enjoy three of her best 30-minute meals for free so you can save time and enjoy eating dinner again. To be part of Martha's at-home taste test and get your three free meals, be one of the first 100 people to text FOOD to 246810. That's FOOD to 246810. FOOD to 246810. Your news, your town, your station. KBFD News when it breaks. Good afternoon. I'm Alex Benzigal with the KVFD Afternoon News. The Iowa State Patrol says a Fort Dodge woman was killed in a two-vehicle accident Thursday afternoon. The accident happened on the Kenyon Road Bridge in Fort Dodge when a westbound 2006 Chevy Impala driven by 89-year-old Marvin Holsey of Fort Dodge crossed the raised median and struck an eastbound 2003 Dodge Dakota pickup truck driven by David L. Stone of Harcourt. A passenger in the Holsey car, 85-year-old Ruth Smith of Fort Dodge, was pronounced dead at the accident scene. Holsey was airlifted to a Des Moines hospital for treatment of his injuries. Stone was transported to Uni Point Trinity Regional Medical Center in Fort Dodge for treatment and was reported in stable condition. The Democratic governor of Louisiana and a Republican congressional leader are criticizing Iowa Congressman Steve King for King's remarks about hurricane victims in their state. King was in Charter Oak for a town hall meeting and compared victims of Hurricane Katrina in 2005 to Iowans dealing with floodwaters now. We're Iowans, and I'm always proud of our reaction to this. I've worked with the FEMA people for a long time, but here's what FEMA tells me. We go to a place like New Orleans, and everybody's looking around saying, who's going to help me, who's going to help me? And they're just always gratified when they come and see how Iowans take care of each other. And so that's a that's a point of pride that spreads across the country. Congressman Steve Scalise, the second ranking Republican in the House, represents the New Orleans suburbs. Scalise calls King's remarks absurd and offensive and a complete contradiction to how the people of New Orleans responded to the devastation of Hurricane Katrina. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards, a Democrat, tweeted that King's comments were disgusting and disappointing. King tweeted yesterday that he's working to restore free speech to the halls of Congress. During his remarks in Charter Oak yesterday, King said in 2005 he made four visits to New Orleans to tour the devastation. First member of Congress to go in down there. Um, we broke some rules to go there. I'll just confess to that. And uh, <clears throat> flew into the airport and just keyed the mic and asked permission to land. They gave it to us, so we went in. And uh, I saw that from the air and from the ground and went back and did what we could to help those folks down there. King toured flood damage in Missouri Valley and Hornick yesterday, promising to work closely with local leaders to help Iowans recover from the disaster. King said as the only Republican in Iowa's congressional delegation, he won't hesitate to use his influence with President Trump to help Iowans gain access to federal flood relief. A Northwest Iowa school principal has resigned, but it's unclear why, as Radio Iowa's Joel Herman reports. The Stormlight Community School District has accepted the resignation of Bo Rouleau as principal of the high school. District Superintendent Dr. Stacy Cole says the resignation is effective.